Hey everyone, my name is Mirai and welcome to part two of part two of this one-on-one -on -one video series where we're setting up Bias Boxer from scratch and then expanding upon that profile. So again, this is part two of part two. If you've missed part one of part two or part one of part one for that matter, you've missed out on several hours of knowledge up to this point and you know what they say about knowledge. Knowledge is power. And so with that, we are going to log into our druids here. Of course, you have been changing around characters, so you've been making sure that the Iceboxer add-on is enabled. I'm not going to check it, but you should check it in case you're having problems. We're going to jump in. If the Iceboxer add-on is enabled, indeed, on all of your characters, then you should be checking the white text printout in the chat window if you have problems with any macro bindings that includes follow and assist on all windows. You should be checking that. Just as a refresher, people are rolling their eyes like, Mariah, we know. You don't know. Because this is a question that comes up all the time. So, uh, yeah, what are we doing here? What are we doing in this video? Well, we're going to start off by first uh, inviting ourselves to a party. All right, we've done that before. Clear targets just in case. Uh, we're going to be altering some of the existing stuff here. Just a quick, just a quick syllabus cap on what we're doing here. Uh, we're altering some of the existing stuff here. We're going to be playing with macros a lot. Macros, uh, this is obviously specific to World of Warcraft, so non-WoW players who are watching this series, you may be left in the dust for a good portion of this video. However, the the concept is very similar to just how we're tying in and using do mapped key actions and how we're tying into other stuff. So it still might be useful. You may not be able to follow, you know, step by step exactly what we're doing, but the idea is there, right? So a handful of macro stuff, some, uh, the broadcast toggler again, if I remember to use the wizard <laughs> to set that up, to show that off, uh, map key virtualization, click bars. Those are always exciting, uh, more interact with target for the melee characters. And we're going to be moving to a manual assist. I'm pretty sure I repeated that several times at this point and, uh, a VFX layout. We're going to be creating a VFX layout live on camera for everyone to watch. It's going to be a flawless performance. I guarantee it. And then we'll finally close uh, we'll close up shop with a slot swap mapped key, kind of showing how to consolidate a bunch of stuff and use it when you sl uh, swap slots. So we've got a, a whole bunch of stuff. We've got a we've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. We're gonna do what they say can't be done. That's not exactly in order, but anyway, where do we want to start here? We're gonna start with uh, let's just jump in the ice boxer. One thing, one thing we might see this is that I created dividers for the characters now because the list is getting a little long and it's getting a little uh difficult to pull these guys out of here very easily so i created dividers that's it we i'm not even sure we'll be looking at characters so i could have probably just gotten away with not showing that but who knows um oh no we will be in the characters <laughs> list later so you would have seen it anyway so yeah where are we starting off here well um we're going to be expanding upon what the wizard sets up here in base hotkeys. So when you look at these, these, you know, when you look through these key maps and you look at these mapped keys, specifically here at base hotkeys, I mean, there's a whole bunch of like stuff and templates that you can start with. You know, uh, we won't be creating more formations, but an example is that people like try to make more formations because these formations are really built around just five, five character character sets, right? So if you play a game that has like six characters, how do you do that, right? Well, you'd come in here. Did I show this already? I don't think I showed this already. You come in here, but these are a little complicated because they're built to work from any particular slot that you're playing. So that flying V formation that I'm constantly using will work the same no matter whether I'm playing from slot one or slot four or slot five. It doesn't matter. It works the exact same due to these crazy advanced targets. We're not going to be dealing with advanced targets probably at all through this because they're advanced. And that's not the point of this series is to not get too advanced. And so, but these are here so you can look at them and try to decrypt them decode them and adapt them to a six man or an eight man or a 10 man character set or a 10 woman character set, right? We don't, uh, we don't dis discriminate over here. So those are the formations, right? But is there anything else? Again, we won't be doing anything with formations, but is there anything else here? Well, <clears throat> me in particular, this all jump kind of bothers me. You know why? Story time. Previous to IS Boxer 42, so 41 and before, we had an others jump mapped key. And then IS Boxer 42 rolls around and Lax turns this into an all jump. He strips the others jump away from us, uh, uh, away from us, and then he shoves this all jump in our face. And I'm unhappy with this. So what can we do? Well, if we can look in here real fast, we can see it's just the jump variable keystroke being sent to all with current. 
What do we know about targets? Do we know anything about targets? Do we know anything at all, folks? Did we watch anything? Have you been writing anything down? We're going to make a copy of this. We're going to be making copies of a handful of things here. Others jump. I want my others jump back. Hotkey. Boom. Control space. That's what I like. You set it to whatever you like. All without current for jump. Bam. We're done. Others jump. Ready to go. Just like that. What else do we have here? We've got some movement keys. Others turn left and others turn right. I don't really use that, right? That's keyboard turning. I'm not going to delete them because maybe one day I will find a use for them. But in particular, uh, in this series in particular, I don't have a use for them. But we're just going to keep them. So we're going to make some copies of these. What other movement keys do we have? Do we have any other directions we can move in? This is a highly requested thing. And it, there's a lot of things that kind of, We're going to keep this kind. We're going to keep this kind. Let's just make some copies of this. <clears throat> Others move forward. No, the thing is, it's like when you, when people want to like break follow, you know, something like break follow, or how do I move my other characters? Like I get it. Everyone's new at some point and you don't know this, but you have to fall into this mindset that we talked about in the previous video. You press a key, you send a key. What key do you want to send and where the fuck is it going? That is the core of everything you're doing is a multiboxer. You're playing the game. The game requires that you send keys to it in order to perform the actions, either in the key bindings menu or buttons on your action bar. And therefore, you have to send the keys. What keys are you sending? Where are they going? Right? So just fall into that mindset. And I think, I think when the sun rises tomorrow, you will have this explosive epiphany, just this mind blowing. Just this, this, this idea that, wow, I can set up all this cool shit. And yes, you will be able to. That's right. Others move forward. What are we doing here? What do we want to set this to first? We want to set this to up. Yep. And then we're going to come into step one. What are we doing? We're changing the variable keystroke to move forward. All without current. Fantastic. Where are these at? It's a variable keystroke. Variable keystroke. This is where we set the ESDF master race uh, movement keys. In the first video, part one of part one, <laughs> there's only one part of part one, but uh, yeah, that's where these are set. And not to be confused, these aren't what you're binding in. Okay, some people have this backwards. They bind things here and then they wonder why it doesn't work in game. These settings are what you're telling IS Boxer are what are already bound in game. If you don't use ESDF to move, then don't set these to ESDF, right? <clears throat> you set these to whatever these particular binds are in the game client itself. And again, these are strafe left, strafe right. You can change the name if you really want to. I don't care enough to change them. Um, but yeah, these are what is bound in the game to these particular actions. That's why we've changed these. Moving along. There's some build up here, but as we get going, we will then speed through a lot of things. So others move forward. We've got three other directions to go. Others move backward. What do we want to set this to? I want to set this to a convenient hotkey because I like pressing this. So I have a button on my mouse. Surprising, I know. I have a button on my mouse that is bound to six. Boom. That's how that's going to work. Others move backward. Here we go. All without current makes it others. Right click, make copy. Others. I guess we could just do it this way. Strafe left. Yes. What are we binding this to? I have a tilt wheel on my Logitech mouse. We're going to bind this to tilt left, which is currently set to eight in the software. This is going to be move left, all without current. Fantastic. One more. We'll just type all this out because it's faster. Others strafe right. Did I spell that correctly? Old man Mirai. Okay, looking good. Looking good. Moving right along. Tilt wheel right, that's set to nine, cool. Move left, nope, move right. If you can hear a dog, I apologize, it's not my dog. I'm surrounded by dogs. Um, so we'll put the, because I like categorization, I'm gonna put the others, our newly created others map keys next to the other others map keys, just like that. And now I do have a question. Does anybody see the issue here? I'll give you a moment. To stop, think about it, look at what we've got. What did we just create? The issue is what we just created. For those of you that said, hey, don't we already have six, eight, and nine bound somewhere else in our profile? 
We do. We do, fam. So we're going to come into here and we're going to, I'm not going to use these for anything else. So six, eight, and nine can go off. If you're confused as to what I'm doing there, you didn't watch part one of part two. Moving along. One more thing before we export. Um, control shift alt R is of course control and then a button on my mouse. If for instance, I do have both of my hands on the keyboard and I'm, I'm typing away and I want to turn off mapped keys. It's a little, uh, I want to turn off key maps. It's a little inconvenient for me to then have to move my hand back to my mouse to hold control and then to press that button on the mouse, right? So what we can do, what we can do is we can create something called an alternate hotkey. We right click on what we wanna create an alternate hotkey for and we choose to create an alternate hotkey. And this, we'll just sort this here. I'm going to set this to the standard Shift Alt M. And what you can see is happening in here is a standard do mapped key action that is pointing directly at the thing, at the mapped key that we Right click on and chose to create an alternate hotkey for. So now both of these hotkeys will activate, will toggle my key maps. So there you go. So is that everything for this? Yes, yes, yes. Looking good. My notes are carrying me through this. And now, after we wake everyone up, and now when I'm on my keyboard, I can hold down Shift and Alt, press the M key, and we can toggle. Phenomenal. What about our other key maps, our, our other map keys? Man. I'm moving too fast here. Anyway, control space. Everybody's jumping. Fantastic. Now, again, with all movement keys, with all movement keys, you have to hold the key. You have to hold the key. Icebox is not going to move your characters 10 yards forward for you. You, as the human being pressing and holding the key, have to estimate where 10 yards may happen to be. So we'll do that. Well, I'm not going to move it 10 yards, but <laughs> I'll just show that the up key moves them forward. The button on my mouse moves them backward. And then of course the tilt wheel moves it left, moves it right. That's exciting. That's very exciting. Moving along, moving along. What's next, what's next? We are going to be setting up some macros here. Um, yeah, good, macros, fantastic. In the game helper section, under World of Warcraft. All right, so for creating a new macro set, which we will not be, you would right click on macro set and choose to create a new macro set. If you create a new macro set, it needs to be bound to something. Otherwise, the macros aren't bound to anyone. However, I will say that don't do this. I don't have a good reason why not to do this, but this is weird. Just bind it to one or the other. If you have characters, if you have class specific macros that you're making and you want to make a new macro set for that, that's something we do in the pro system, you bind it to those characters that fit that class. We won't be doing that though. That's pro system stuff. Uh, so if you want to create a new macro, you would then right click on the macro set itself and choose to create a new macro. However, before we do that, as you can see, our macro set is bound to all of our character sets. But um, to show this off here, I'm not going to be using Jamba or EMA. I don't use Jamba or EMA as it is, but I won't be doing anything with those here either in this series. But I do want to show that if you, um, I'm not going to delete these because I don't know if I simply restore it if it's going to fix the problem. However, if you do delete these, as I kind of alluded to in the previous video about how the WoW macro is only created for WoW players who set up WoW through the Quick Setup Wizard, and for non-WoW users, you won't have the WoW macros and you won't have the WoW key map and stuff like that, right? So this is kind of the reason why the WoW key map is separate from every other key map and why the assist and the follow make that for WoW, make that final jump to the WoW key map. And that's because if you delete, if you don't have one of these macros and you have an action pointing to a macro that doesn't exist, you can't export. Likewise, some people may want to reclaim these particular uh, key combinations that these three Jamba macros are bound to. In that case, you would think that, oh, for those you can't, this is off camera, but uh, I'm not gonna show this again. I'll just show this right now, but down here, down below, future Mirai, we need to be down here. <clears throat> So there's the key combination, right? And uh, we're not going to be messing with any of this other stuff. Just key combination. Um, you click this, and of course, this pops up. And there you go. That's very similar. This is the map. This is the hotkey picker um, that we see on map keys and whatnot. Except this one um, has write modifiers as well, because macros for WoW can use write modifiers. Um, they're different from left. Left and right are different. So uh, anyway, what you might want to do is you might come in here and, and treat this like a removing a hotkey from a map key, you might just blank all this out, hit OK. But now, as we come back up here, future editing Mirai, we, uh, we'll have nothing here. It'll be blank, right? There'll be nothing here. However, as I just said, if you have an action, 
a named while macro action pointing at a macro that either doesn't exist any longer or doesn't have a key combination bound to it, and you try to export, Iceboxer will not let you export. It will tell you uh, which map key in, um, is where the issue lies and what macro it's pointing at. And it tells you to configure a key combination to perform a wow macro. Now you can get around this by simply in the hotkey picker, there's no key at the top, which means nothing is bound to it. However, none is a special little action that we can set a special little key combination that we can set to more or less nullify this macro. So I'm going to set all of these to none. You'll see none pop up there. And so we're going to do this. It's all the way at the top and it's just none. And so we'll come in here and I'll, I'll null, I'll null these out. Just like that in case we want to reclaim. And I do want to reclaim what Jamba strobe off is bound to, I believe, because I'm going to set it to my console reload UI, which is, um, we're gonna be setting this up as well. I like to use Control Shift Alt F12. But uh, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. We're gonna create that new macro. What are we gonna create? This might be exciting for some people. A set view macro. That's right, folks. Get the pen and paper out, get the notes out, get the screenshot, get the print screen button ready. We're gonna be doing a set view macro. Zoom in to the fullest. So we can see this bad boy. So we can see this, right? Is everyone ready? Is everyone ready? Oh, what is, what is that? Is it a colon? It's a semicolon, folks. If your first question is, why do we type it in there twice? Well, I will leave that open-ended and you, as the new user, the new macro creator, you can either Google that <clears throat> or you can just try it yourself. You can just remove that back half off and see what happens with one command versus two commands. Just try it out yourself. Now, I know I got a lot of flack for this in the, in the gathering video, how I did not zoom in on this macro and people couldn't see it. Um, for those of you who couldn't see it or were completely unfamiliar with set view macros, um, my expectation <laughs> was that you would just kind of Google it. There's, I mean, this is a heavily talked about topic, heavily, heavily asked about topic. Uh, and so when you just go to Google and you type in Warcraft set view macro, you will be bombarded with hundreds of results from the old WoW forums, the new WoW forums, dual dash boxing forums, iceboxer.com forums. And there you will probably find more information about set view on why there's two entries instead of one, but you can use one instead of two dealer's choice and what save view is and what reset view is and how there are bindings in the game that you can also set for set view these days and save view and reset view and all that stuff that I wasn't going to cover in that video, right? I was, I was kind of hoping that if you weren't familiar with it, you would Google that topic, right? There, that's why. But uh, yeah, okay. So anyway, we have to set a key combination. This is another question that people have. I know we're moving slow. A lot of bullshitting here. A lot of people have questions about why do we need to set a key combination for the macros that we create in IS Boxer? Shouldn't Iceboxer just be able to do the macro for us? Well, Iceboxer is not a bot. <laughs> we talked about that before. But I will, again, leave this somewhat open-ended. I'll flip this around on you for a moment. We'll talk about this once we get in-game. But my question to you is that when you're asking me, why do we need a key combination set to this? My question to you, before I answer, is going to be, if you created a macro in the game client, how would you access that macro? How do you access a macro created in the game client? Once you answer that, I'll give you time. Well, we have to configure a few more things. We'll get in game and then hopefully I'll remember to talk about why we have to set key combinations. Anyway, I'm gonna use F6. We're gonna abuse the hell out of F6. This should be a unique, unused key combination that is not bound in the game client. This is why people have problems with follow and assist because they will have something bound to modifier plus backspace or modifier plus F11. You can see that these are the binds here. So that's why F11 and, F and backspace are important uh, to not bind things with modifier plus or just anything to F11 or backspace anyway. So 
there's a little tidbit of information. Moving along, moving along here, base hotkeys. We're going to create a new mapped key. Uh, set view four. Phenomenal. What do we want to press? I'm going to press Alt One before we get kicked off um, uh, kicked off uh, offline for inactivity. Right click keystroke actions. What did I say in the previous video? I also hinted at it here in the beginning. Named while wow macro action. It is a named while wow macro action. We are using. Do not use the one below it. It's deprecated. Just use a named while wow macro action, please, for the love of God. I talked about this in the previous video. Where do we want to set our set? Where do we want to send our set view camera angle to? Well, you may want to do all with current. I'm going to do all without. There you go. Macro set, quick set of 42. Macro all the way at the bottom. Now, what you'll see me do when we move through this quickly, when we begin to pick up the pace, there's only one macro set. So I can move my mouse over this area, hit my scroll wheel down. Auto selects quick set of 42. It's the only one in there. What else can we do? We know that this is the bottom macro, although I will be in this picker a little bit, but we know that that's the bottom macro that we just created. It's brand new. You can also scroll all the way down to the bottom. Boom. Just like that. Set. Assigned. One more thing. Always on is where I'm going to set this up. My reload interface looks good. We could set the hotkey to the same. I know I said the key combination for the wow macro should be unused and unique. You can set a hotkey on a mapped key to be the same thing, though. I'm talking about in game, that key combination should be unused and unique. In game, it should be unused and unique for the key combination on the macro, named while macro action. Where do we want to reload? Everybody. Boom, boom, all the way down to the bottom. Click up once, boom, we're set. Now, we can't use these just yet. We will export, though. We did just set up the console reload UI mapped key. We can't use it just yet because any time, any time that you touch anything in macros, anything, you change the key, the, the key combination, you change a letter in the macro, you change something in the macro, you delete a macro that you want gone, any time you touch macros in ISBoxer and then you export, you have to reload the user interface if you are already in the game world. So one final time, I know we just set up the console reload UI. That doesn't work just yet because we just made those changes to it. So we have to turn off, well, we don't technically have to turn off key maps, but it's a good practice when you're typing to turn off key maps. We turn on repeater so I can do this on all windows, type slash reload, hit enter. We're reloading the user interface. And now, and now with key maps on, Oh, with key maps on, I will move my camera angles over here on the top screens. We're using an all without current, right? When I hit Alt 1, it will perform a set view four on those top four game clients. Three, two, one. Just like that. If you weren't watching, one more, one more show, one more show. So again, we're not changing the view on the main client on window current. We're changing it on all without current. Three, two, one. Just like that. Key maps enabled because we're in base hotkeys. Likewise, I put the Control Shift Alt F12 uh, mapped key hotkey into Always On. So it doesn't matter whether key maps are on or off. I can just hold Control Shift Alt, hit F12, everything reloads. Moving along, building, building upon that. What else are we doing here? Set view. We did that. What can we do with a set view? What can we do with it? Can we can we put it in some other places? Do you want to run a set view command when you do other things? Like perhaps when you're following, when you press your follow hotkey, maybe you want to do a set view there as well. Maybe, maybe when you're turning on repeater, you want to do a set view. Maybe, maybe when you're doing a send next click action, you want to do a set view. Also, also possible, right? Also possible. So with the follow setup, we'll, we'll, we'll just start from the top of that list there. From the follow setup, this is dealer's choice. Where do you want to put it? You can come into the, the follow like we talked about the window current chaining things together, right? So for follow, we have several places we can put this in. We can put it in right here. This leads to the active method, which if you trust me, when we go into the party key map, we're going to the follow me map, uh, follow me wow macro uh, mapped key, because that's what the active method for wow is tied to. We could put the set view macro in here, in here as well. We could make that final jump to the wow key map, and we can come in here to the follow me section here, and we can do a do map key action and use set view here. Or if you just want to hard code it into your follow macro, there's nothing stopping you from doing this. By the way, that's case sensitive. I'll put that on the screen. Um, so there's nothing stopping you from writing it in here either, right? It's all going to perform exactly the same. 
I like to create things separate so that I can toggle things on and off. I think that's good practice. Um, it won't be too apparent here as we just deal with a set view macro, but it may be apparent as you move to something more advanced if you make that jump to the pro system. Uh, so where do we want to put it? Well, we'll just put it in our standard setup here. So again, do map key action. We're just going to uh, our actual our actual proper multi window target is already set in our map key itself. So we don't want to change. We just want to do a window current, right? We're already in the right key map. So we're going to come down here to set view four. Boom. We've just integrated set view into our follow, uh, our follow key. Just like that. What else can we do? I'm going to right click this. We're going to copy this action to clipboard. So I'm going to turn it on when I turn on repeater. Do we want to set it in here? You have to think that repeater starts disabled. So I'm going to hit this hot key once. It's going to turn it on and I'm going to hit it again to turn it off. Do I always want to be setting view on the enable and disable of repeater. For what I'm demonstrating in this video, I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to set this here. We're going to make this jump to the active method for repeater, which is in toggles and is for World of Warcraft. The default setup is going to be current window. If you don't trust me, check out your virtual map keys tab of your character set and see where the active method for activate repeat is pointing. But step one is going to be to turn it on. So I'm going to simply paste this in here this is our do map key action for the set view map key and base hotkeys. It's all set up. Phenomenal. And on top of that, for our druids, we'll just throw this in here. We've got a round robin. We've got our round robin send next click action for ground target AOE. Now, instead of doing this, don't fall into this pit, right? We talked about this. This is a window current. You can't round robin a window current. So this is similar to how you might use a custom assist with round robin. We have to re-implement, as I said, as I believe I said in the previous video, part one of part two, is that you would need to recreate the assist where you wanted the round robin to happen. So knowing that we need to recreate the set view like we originally did, which was with a named while macro action. It doesn't really matter where it's at in the list, but all without or actually all with current. However, this will also be a round robin. So we're going to round robin our set view. Oops, we have to set the set view macro clearly. Do, 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 do. So we're going to round robin the set view macro per window as we move through the press of Alt Q, which is a remap for Shift 2, which is going to be, which, which is already bound to our ground target AoE spell of Starfall. So with these three changes in place, hopefully I didn't screw any of this up. Everything always works right for Mirai. I hear that a lot. Maybe I'll make some mistakes in this one. We'll see. So anyway, now we will turn on repeater. This is why I want to demonstrate this, because if I turn off repeater at this point, we can't see it. So I turn off repeater. You can see that their uh, cameras are still offset. When I turn on repeater, set view. Likewise, if we turn this again, turn this off, and then I come over here and I press my follow key, they will set view. Now, the camera angles are still a little messed up. You can set view again. We'll fix that. I don't know why there's an earthquake up above me. I think my neighbors just got home. So there's that. Now, finally, again, with their camera angles messed up, we will hit Alt Q and we will move through the round robin of our send next click action. So the first character is obviously window one. We'll do that. She snaps to set view four, cast. Watch slot two, snaps to set view four, cast. Slot three, set view four, cast, 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 just like that. Clear those targets, get into your formation. <laughs> I like the flying V formation. What can you do? What can you do? Anyway, um, yeah, so there's all that. There's all that. Um, next on our list, follow set view, repeater set view, send next click plus set view. Boom, 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 knocking them out. Here we go, folks. Next, we're going to enhance our inter, uh, our inter, our intervite. We're going to enhance our intervite map key. Our invite map key is what we're going to enhance. So we're going to create a very generic way of accepting, uh, of clicking the first button of any panel. So uh, this is a click uh, static pop-up one button one. You do not have to put the macro syntax as the name. I know that can be confusing. Again, slash console reload UI is the, is the syntax for this particular macro here. Just like I'm doing it here. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Um, we could just, again, we could label this blah, blah, and it would work just fine. So, but 
in the list, as I quickly look down the list, if it's named blah, blah, I'm going to have a difficult time remembering that that's what it is. So it helps to name shit what it is. And then you and I, when I'm helping you in the future, can both find these things. <laughs> Plus I could just paste it in. So did I type that right? Static pop-up one, button one, looking good. Key combination, something unused and unique. I didn't answer the question. Set this to control F6. Let's hope I remember to answer the question here. Put it in my notes. Answer the question. Okay. I'm not sure that's going to work or not. So we'll see. Did I turn off? Okay. All right. So we've got our, our uh, static pop-up uh, static pop-up one button one. So the only thing that's doing this is literally a command in the game. Some people, you're just not familiar with what's, with what's in the game, with what's available as commands in the game. People will see that to be like, if that looks like we're cheating, it's, you could literally type that into the chat window and it will function the exact same. You, these, are, these are macros. <laughs> Iceboxer can't create macros that don't work for the macro system in World of Warcraft. It can't do that. So just keep that in mind when you're making macros in IS Boxer. You can't make macros that don't work. You know, I can't make a cast fireball macro for my shaman and have my shaman magically cast fireball. You know, you have to stick to the rules of macros in World of Warcraft. <laughs> so uh, what this does is static pop-up, uh, static pop-up one, Whatever the first pop-up is on your screen is static pop-up one. If you have an invite on your screen that says so-and-so wants to invite you to a party, accept, decline, that is static pop-up one. If at the same time you have that present and you get a guild invite, then you've got a second pop-up there, right? Or your dungeon pops, right? Your dungeon that you were in queue for pops and a second pop-up happens. That would be static pop-up two on screen. So pretend they're reversed. Pretend you get a guild invite at the same time you're trying to do a party invite and you use this, you're going to accept the guild invite. There's, this is not a smart, this is not an intelligent, intelligent way of doing things, but it just works for a small enhancement here. So just keep that in mind. Um, however, we do want to tie this into our invite. So our invite team active method for wow is pointing at the wow macro. And we're going to turn this into a two-step process. So in step one, we're going to send the invite and on step two, we are going to run this named while macro action to who are we sending the invite to, you know, our other characters that we're not playing from. So all without current. Click static pop-up button one, just like that. However, in the mapped key, it also needs to be set to pressed or released. Now it is. And because... Our, our starting point here of invite team has the hold option enabled. It will respect the pressed or released execution of whatever it's pointing at. And in this case, it is pointing at the active method, which is in our character set that points at the invite team while macro. So, which is a two-step process. So the hold, um, the hold option will respect that press and release. So lots of so's. Let's export that. I have to answer the question here, right? People have been on their seat. Um, what did we just do? First and foremost, what did we just do? We made a macro. Reload. We also need to get out of our party. So I'm going to do a quick. That's not. Just like that. Turn on our key maps. When I press and hold shift alt I, you will see in the top windows, you will see the invite uh, dialog. There it is. When I release three, two, one. They accept like that, like that. Who's your buddy? Who's your pal, Mariah? So intermission, why do we need to set a key combination to macros created in IS Boxer? And so my question was then, how do you, when you create a macro in the game, here's a set view macro I was playing with. We'll just use this as a perfect example. So when you create a macro in game, how do you, act, how do you, how do you get to this macro? Because you can't left or right click it here. In the, in the macro bank. So you have, to, you have to pull it out of here and you have to put it on your action bar somewhere, right? So when you put it on your action bar, you put it on a button. And then from that point, you have two ways to access this macro. You can, you can click on it. Two normal ways to access the macro, I might say. Two normal ways. You can click on it or you press the 
the key binding on that button to access the macro. That's the gold mine, folks. We can't click on IS Boxer macros because they're invisible and they're stored in the IS Boxer add on. So the only other way, I'm not going to fold this finger down because this is a bad finger. The only other way is to send the key combination that we have bound it to in the game helper section. And that's what executes the macro. Because check this out, right? We bound our set view macro to F6. So watch this. Whether key maps are on or off, it doesn't matter. We don't have F6 set as a hotkey anywhere, so it doesn't matter. But the add-on is enabled still. The Iceboxer add-on is on. If I just press on this character, if I just turn off repeater and I press F6, she does the set view macro because that's where it's bound to in the add-on and it's bound to that key combination. Likewise, if I turn on repeater and I mess up my cameras and I, I press F6, they all do it because it's bound to that it's the F6 is bound to that macro in all of their windows. You got to have it bound to something, man. Iceboxer, you press a key, it sends a key. You press a key, it sends a key. Got it? Moving along. What are we doing here? Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. We're going to jump into some basic plus type of stuff. And if you're wondering why, when I turned on repeater, the, the set view macro did not go off, it's because key maps were disabled, right? So turning on and off repeater at this point is not executing set view because the set view map key is inside of a key map that is disabled. If you don't want that, you would then put set view into a key map that would never be disabled. Now you may, you can technically do that at this point, because I mean, if we think about it, we are more or less setting view when we follow and when we turn on repeater, which is actually how I do gathering. You know, I never got the gathering video that shows the very fancy uh, interact with mouse over method of doing things. I don't even use that. I don't even use that. I turn on repeater and I click on things. You can watch my, I have one video where I, I'm gathering. It's like called gather discussion and gathering or gathering and discussion or something. It's right after battle for Azeroth launched somewhere in there. And I show how I'm gathering. I'm just simply turning on repeater, but I'm also sending the set view to sync my views up. Right? So <clears throat> you don't have to use fancy shit. You can just, you know, dinosaur Mirai doesn't use the fanciest to fanciest stuff, but I don't know. It's personal preference, man. It's personal preference. How do you want to do it? Right? So anyway, if you did want to, you know, we're going to pull the hotkey from here because we're, we're setting view multiple ways now. So we're going to pull the hotkey from there. And if we pull the hotkey from there, you can simply put this in always on, you know, you can put it in always on, or likewise, we can actually put this into the wow key map to just kind of keep it, you know, categorized, put the wow stuff in the wow key map. And that's fine. Cause the wow key map doesn't get turned off either. So there you go. So what are we doing? Oh, we're going to do a follow train. I'm going to do a follow train. Everyone's like, wait, what? A follow train. That's right. A follow train. Now, um, I am actually somewhat concerned why the base setup doesn't have a follow train. I'm pretty sure there was a follow train like a very long time ago. I'm remembering a follow train, but I may be misremembering. I thought there was. And there was also like emotes that Lax used to put in here and stuff just so people could have like fun with it. Then he become then he became old angsty grandpa lax and he just tore everything out and it's all technical now. <laughs> I don't know. You can put in your own emotes, your own stuff. Just this is how we build it, right? So we're going to be doing, uh, this macro is going to be created in such a way with Iceboxer macro variables so that it works from any slot on any character set, no matter who we're playing from. Uh, I showed this, I believe in the first video that there are these macro variables here in this invite uh, macro. Again, I know it looks very scary and very confusing. Uh, generally, if I ever use these, I do have to look these up myself. I don't use them a whole lot. But if you're worried about what this does, you're like, that just doesn't look right. That doesn't sit right with me. Go to the preview tab. And then on whatever character set you want to look at, we have multiple character sets now. So on the druids, from Mirandus's window, when we execute the invite team macro, it looks like this. Does this not look like an exact macro that works perfectly in game. Yes. What this is doing, this, these aren't commands that are in game. These are commands that are in IS Boxer. So when you export, all of these macros are written to disk, right? And the add-on is refreshed, but there are multiple files within the IS Boxer add-on folder. You can go in there and look at them. They're written in plain text, just like any other, well, they're written in plain text, but in Lua code, which is what all add-ons are coded in, in World of Warcraft. But it's literally just, you know, on Mirandus's window, it's in her add-on file. It's writing this out. 
in Shadra's file, it's writing this out and it's binding, it's binding this key combination here to this in her file. It's like, it gets a little complex. You don't need to know that, but I know I'm just trying to ease people's minds when they look at this. They're like, I don't like this program. Well, dude, you're just writing out a macro. It's just because you can literally just make that macro, right? You could just write out this macro right here and you could just put this on your action bar in game and press that key and the invite would be sent out. But it's not versatile. It's not flexible from any window or any character, sl- uh, character set, right? So again, for the follow macro, for this follow train, you could literally just make that type of macro in game. You can tell slot whoever's in slot five to follow slot four, whomever's in slot four to follow three, three follows two, two follows one. That's what the train is, right? However, you know, if you don't set it up, um, if you don't set it up in a versatile way, well, then you can only really use that from one window ever. So anyway, short story long, um, what is the command here? I have to look this up. So I've got this written down. If character is slot, in this case, slot one, follow curly braces, slot five. And we will copy this four more times because we have five slots. So we need five commands similar to how we had five commands here for our five slots. If you want to expand upon this stuff, you can. Like, you know, some people want to invite more than five characters into a raid party. You can technically do this, but that's a little complicated. You need to create, I believe, um, uh, more lines there and you need to execute it in a different way. I don't, I don't want to get into that. Anyway, um, so this is, again, case sensitive. I believe I've written all this correctly. We have to think that we have five slots in our character set. So two, three, four, five. If character is in slot five, follow slot four. Characters in slot four, follow slot three. Characters in slot three, follow slot two. If characters in slot two, follow slot one. And if we're playing from a different window, we would tell slot one to follow slot five so she could wrap around and be the back of the train, which is the caboose. She could be the caboose. And, and again, if you think this is scary, go to the preview tab. And on the Druid's character set, we'll just look at what it says on Miranda's window. And I'll bet you $50, don't take this bet because I'm right. I'll bet you $50 that it says, follow whoever's in slot five. I don't, is, who's in slot five? Versalia? I think Versalia is in slot five. Whoever's in slot five's name will be there. Follow Versalia. Shouldn't have taken that bet. And likewise, from any window, Shadra's going to say, follow Miranda's. Because this is a versatile macro that is written out and stored in several different files for all of these individual characters. And it doesn't matter whether we're playing from the paladins, the druids, the mages, this will work no matter what. Again, we can look at a different character set and what these characters will have. Allegiant will be following Debonair, who is slot one. Very fancy. I know it uh, again, looks kind of scary and you don't have to learn these again. You know, I had to look this up myself to figure this out because I don't normally run a follow train, but maybe I should in the future. Anyway, bind this to a uh, unused, unique key binding that is not not already used in game. Um, And we're looking good. So when we come into base hotkeys, we'll set this up again. We will create a new map key. This will be our follow train. We'll put this up here. I will set this to, um, I guess, shift, shift plus my follow key. So shift mouse five. Cool, coming in here. What have we been setting up all this time? Named while macro actions. Where is this going? Who do we want to follow? If we tell everyone to follow, we are also telling the window current we're playing from to follow, to run her follow macro as well. If we're playing from slot one, do we want Miranda's to wrap around back to be the caboose? No, right? So clearly we don't want to run this from window current. We want to run this from all without current. I'm I'm moving this up again because I don't know how far I'm zoomed in. I, I change that from time to time. So follow train, cool story. Everything's there. Uh, we already set it to here. Great. We're looking good. Export that. What did we just do? And what do we have to do? Reload. Correct. Correct. Everybody wake up. So I'll hit my normal follow command. We'll come over here. And now what we can see is when I hit uh, shift F5, they will all turn and focus in a different direction because they will be following a new character. And now when we spread out, if I zoom out a little bit, it's kind of hard. There's this tree up above me, which blocks my camera. If we can see, we've got a follow train. We've got our follow train here, right? And of, and of, and of course, I know I say these things a lot again, and of course, <laughs> however, I know I say that shit a lot, but uh, 
However, if we switch slots and we come over here and we hit, see, they're still following her, but if we hit shift F5, she will wrap around to follow who was normally in slot five, which is Versalia. And we just hit shift F5. She will wrap around to Versalia and Shadra's already following Miranda. So it doesn't really matter. And of course, <laughs> there's our follow train from this window. And this continues to work for many character set, right? So that's very cool. That's very cool. Let's get back in our formation, please. Let's have some respect. There we go. What's next on the list? Uh, right, camera following style. This is important. So I did talk about this when we did our set view um, that the cameras still can get messed up. Maybe not for you because you may run a different uh, camera following style in game. There is this drop down. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I have repeater on, but what, regardless, we don't need repeater on. But um, there are these options here. There's four options in the UI. There's actually five options total. So there's a hidden option, which I don't remember exactly what it does, but it's very similar to this one. However, you know, I don't like the camera to adjust automatically. Some people need that on their characters. And so you will probably have always adjust camera. And if you have that on all of your characters, well then using set view and having the view still kind of fall out of sync is not a big problem because you will be using always adjust camera. However, I don't like that behavior on the character I'm playing from. And in fact, on my other windows, I do like only when moving. I do like only when moving. Um, but for this particular example here that we'll set up, I'll set it up so that never adjust is set on the main window, on window current, and then always adjust is set on everyone else. So there's an in-game console variable. It's called camera smooth style. It's not called camera following style. It is called camera smooth style. And again, there's five entries from zero to four. So zero, one, two, three, four. There's five total values that it will accept. Again, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the special one does, but it, again, it's similar to something that's not here. It's, it's, well, it's similar to, to one we won't be using. It's similar to one of the horizontal one moving. However, the ones we're interested in here for this are these bottom three. So this bottom one is zero. Always adjust is two. Only when moving is four. Never adjust is zero. Always adjust is two. And only when moving is four. Zero, two, four. Zero, two, four. I don't know what number this is and I don't care. So cancel out of that. Everyone's set to always adjust because clearly I can move the camera on and they're not auto adjusting, right? How do we fix that? Well, we're going to make a macro. Are you surprised? New while macro. Uh, camera smooth style zero. Console camera smooth style zero. It's not case sensitive, but uh, I like to keep it case sensitive because um, I'm anal retentive about these things. <laughs> so there you go. Um, what do we have? We have Alt F6, I believe. Yes, that's what's next in line. Cool. Alt F6. We will then make a copy of this. Two. We will change the key combination that we also copied along with our copy. So we'll just simply tick one of those boxes and we'll change this value to two. So now we have camera smooth style zero, camera smooth style two with unique key combinations set to them. We will come into our base hotkeys key map. We will come into new map key, camera, camera, following style. We will set this to, uh, we unbound alt one, so we'll reuse alt one. And so we'll come in here. How are we tying into these macros, boys and girls? Do we know this by now? Named while macro action. We're setting on window current, never adjust. I don't know if you can see that. This, this list gets long. We'll copy this, we'll paste this, we'll change this, all without current. One down, tick, just like that, boom. Now, window current gets never adjust, all without current get always adjust. Export. We made a macro. We need to reload. Don't forget that. <laughs> Never forget that. So now, again, we still don't have the camera following style in place. When I press Alt 1, absolutely nothing's going to happen. 3, 2, 1, nothing's going to happen. Why not? Because we need to move the camera before the behavior actually takes place. So now, now I'm going to turn on repeater. It's going to, it's going to snap the set view in, but just work with me here. So when we turn on repeater and I move my camera now, we're moving the camera. And when I release the mouse button, 
They, on the top windows, will spin back around behind themselves. Three, two, one. Just like that. Nothing ever goes wrong for Mirai. <laughs> one more time. Three, two, one. Boom. And when we swap windows, we can see that this is still enabled here. We press Alt-1 in this window. Now, when I turn on, again, it'll snap this FU4, but when I move the cursor, uh, when I move the camera over in this direction, we can see, again, on the count of three, the other four up there, including the old, the old slot one, will also whip back around behind themselves for the camera. Three, two, one. Just like that. Magic. It's magic, I tell you. It's not magic. We're creating these commands. These commands are available in game. Like, you know, you could literally just type in, in the chat window, console camera smooth style two. And now always adjust is on. This is not magic. This isn't magic, right? This is why non-WoW players may be somewhat bored here because most games, dare I say like all games, don't have access to the commands that are in the interface with just raw, we just put them in the macro. It's phenomenal. WoW is so easy to play. And because it's such a, it's such a friendly, it's not, not I don't want to make that, I don't want to make that statement. I want to say it's very friendly to play. It's very friendly to play. And so, you know, <laughs> When you multi-box it, a lot of the commands are just as friendly and we can tie into those in a very cool way. So I hit Alt-1 and it's you know, no longer here. Again, the top ones are auto-adjusting. Cool story. Moving along. What do we have here? Oh, broadcast toggler. Time for a broadcast toggler, folks. So this is, um, you know, I should have said this in the very beginning that I am setting up a handful of things, even though I said we would like in the very beginning of this entire series, I said we were going to be evolving this profile, how I would do it. Some of these things I won't be keeping, but I do want to show them because a lot of people request these things. And I just want a place to have this displayed so that people can be like, oh, cool. This is how we do this, right? So here's something that I, I generally don't use myself, but I'll set it up is a broadcast toggler. What people want to do the request is that they want to be able to hold a key down, have mouse repeater turn on, just mouse repeater, and when they release the key, it'll turn off. Super simple. Mapped key wizard for this one. Mapped key wizard, broadcast toggler, broadcasting toggler. Next, we're gonna make some changes here. We're gonna call this uh, repeater quick. Okay. I have that problem. I hit the, I hit the enter key on the name. Cause I'm so used to when you rename something here, you type it in and then you hit enter. Let's try that over again. Mapped key wizard. One more time. What am I picking? Broadcasting toggler. Next <laughs> repeater quick. Don't press the enter key. Okay. Uh, below that, what are we pressing to activate this? So we'll just use alt a. That sounds good. Uh, for this, we want to be able to press and hold and then release, right? So this is gonna be a two-step process, pressed or released, pressed or released of this hotkey. Did I lose my, I did, there we go. Okay, lost my highlighter. Um, this toggle should turn um, broadcasting off instead of on. That's only if you, that's weird for this, but that's only if you start with repeater on, which most action MMO games do like Diablo 3. You would generally start with repeater enabled when you export or launch your character set in WoW, we don't do that. Um, however, you can set that up if you really want that. Um, broadcast from these windows. Well, I'm gonna set this to window current because this is how the World of Warcraft MMORPG uh, broadcast is set up by default. So we're just gonna set this to window current, but all without current is standard. Block buttons from current window. If you want that, check the box. I don't want that. So I will do repeater enabled, enabled. Yeah, and we'll do repeater disabled. Okay, so there we go. Looking good, spelled correctly, good to go. So now we will export. And when we press Alt A and hold Alt A, we will get a mouse repeater turned on. So if I hold Alt A, we can see in the top windows, we've got the mouse cursor. When I release, it goes away. Press and hold, there it is. However, this button is not lighting up. This bothers me. It may not bother you. So there's another way to set this up and have the, have the button light up when you turn this on. So I just wanna show a different way to do this because there's multiple ways to do things. Sometimes there's a bad way to do it and a good way to do it. Sometimes there's a, a, a way that doesn't 
tick everyone's, you know, boxes that they want. For me, I want that button to light up when I have repeater on, regardless that it's temporary. And when I release this, it's going off anyway. I do want that light to turn on. So old man Mariah is set in his way. So we're going to come in here. We're going to delete our repeater that we are broadcasting toggle that we just set up. I'm going to come into the toggles key map. We're going to make a copy of the, I said we were using current window because this is where we set the set view. If for some reason you're using all windows, you would make a copy of all windows. Make copy. Activate repeat. Quick. Move this up here. Drop that. Open this. Uh, I'm going to pull the set view out of here because this is the quick one. I don't want to run the set view. That's again, personal preference. However, we made a copy of the one that turns on the button, right? So we already have all those actions right here. This is a menu action that turns on that, that, that lights up that button. And then on step, on step two, it'll turn off that button. It'll go back to desaturated, right? So with that said, we know from earlier, we can set this to pressed or released, right? Pressed or released. And then back at our always on key map, we can, we can, um, how do I want to do this? Do I just want to make a copy? We can just make a copy of this. That's fine. You can also create an alternate hotkey. However you want to do, you can create a map key from scratch and do a do map key action. That's totally fine. Uh, I'm just going to keep a copy of this. Activate repeat quick. And we're going to set the hold option to on. As I said, it respects the other way to do this. Did I show this? The other way to do this is, would be to just set it to pressed or released here as well. But I'm just going to keep this to, you can set that there, but then when you set on, this grays out because it's ignored. You can't execute when a hotkey is pressed or released is not respected. That this field is ignored when you set this to on. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to set that differently because I know someone's going to be like, but he's got pressed or released there and I can't change it. <laughs> so for our do map key action, instead of doing the active method, we're going to simply point it at the quick maps key that we just made a copy of and uh, adjusted for pressed or released. And now, and now we're going to also change the hotkey. And now when we export and we press and hold alt a one more time, we get the repeater, we get it lighting up here as well, this button. And when we release, it goes off. Another way to do it. Another way to do it. I'm just going to leave, um, I'll leave it in place. That's fine. I, d I don't think I'm going to be using alt a for anything else. Anyway. Moving along, this is where shit gets crazy. Let's hope I don't mess this up. <clears throat> We're going to be digging into some mapped key virtualization actions. Oh boy. So I'm setting all of this up in base hotkeys right now, but again, we should probably categorize this to be a little bit different when we finally make our, our consolidated, uh, I'm pointing down because it's further down on my notes, my consolidated slow, uh, slot swap mapped key. So remind me to do that. So right here, we're just going to make another mapped key. Um, auto assist toggle. That's right, boys and girls. We're going to be learning how to toggle on and off auto assist, auto interact, all these cool things. Um, so the way that this is working here is we're actually going to come back into our Druid's character set. And over here in the virtual mapped keys tab, we're going to turn off auto assist from the beginning. So to just, you just blank those out, hit okay. And now it looks just like auto interact with target. Both of these are off. Um, however, again, we have multiple character sets. So if we're going to do this, we might as well follow suit across the board. I'm not going to just yet though, because I want to show, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> Let's just blank it out across the board. And we'll control this with our, with our click bar from here on forward. So mages as well. But again, you may, you may not want this, right? You may, you may do this a little bit differently. When you play the mages, you may want the auto assist on all the time, no matter what. So you may do this differently. I'm just going to blank all these out. Come back into base hotkeys. So step one, this is going to be a toggle on and off two steps. I don't know. Two steps. There we go. Two steps. Action. Key map action. Mapped key virtualization action. Mapped key virtualization action. Who do we want this to affect? We want this to affect our entire character set because that's where we would want to turn on and off our auto assist. So all with current. First picker here. It does say mapped key virtualization action, but if you want to adjust key maps at any point, if you want to uh, virtualize entire key maps, you would just set the key map and then hit OK. You would leave the mapped key field blank. However, we're not doing that. We're going to change 
the auto assist me active method that we just blanked out. We just unassigned on our character set. We're going to change this. We want to change this key map. You've got three options. Do the original, do nothing, or do this map key instead. We're going to do this map key instead. This is exactly what the grid on the virtual map keys tab of the character set is doing. It is doing another map key instead of what's assigned on the left. Whatever is assigned on the right is what it's doing instead, right? So the way that the wizard sets this up for our character set is that it sets it to the assist me active method. Okay, cool. So we can just right-click on this, create a copy of this step, paste it in. And then for step two, we're going to be toggling it back off. So the only change we need to make is to do nothing instead. That unassigns it. So in step one, we turn it on. We do this map key instead. In step two, we do nothing instead. And that is in reference to our auto assist me active method. What do we want to press? Um, we'll press Alt 2, I guess. However, let's make one minor change. Because you can't actually, when I press Alt 2, you can't actually get any feedback. So this is one reason why pop-up text actions are pretty useful. You get feedback when you press buttons, right? So we're going to set this to window current. That's fine. We'll say auto assist enabled. Two seconds is fine. Uh, I like to use the hex code, so turn that to green. Right click, copy action, paste, disabled. And we'll set this to red or magenta, sorry. <laughs> red. And that is that. Okay, looking good. That's just going to say pop up text on the screen. Um, yeah, that's fine. So when I press Alt 2, yeah, looking good, looking good. So now that we've exported, we made those changes to our character set. If I click on this, I have a hostile target. They do not, what? They do not have a target. They do not have a target. So when I press 2, when I press any of my, uh, any of my keys or whatever that had an auto assist before, when I press them now, they're not going to automatically assist. Watch. Key maps are enabled as well. They're not auto assisting, right? However, if I press my assist hotkey, they will pick up the target and then I can cast. So there's that, right? Now we can press Alt 2 and we will turn on the auto assist. You'll see that pop-up text right there, auto assist enabled. Now when I select something and I press my two key, they will auto assist and begin to cast. Who's your buddy? Who's your buddy? However, uh, yeah, when I press Alt 2, it'll disable it, but they still have a target. They still have a target. So I have to clear their target uh, like that and then show this again that they won't auto assist with it disabled, right? We can sort of fix that. We sort of fix that. We can, in a generic way, we can just simply create like a clear target macro. We'll set this to uh, F6, Control Shift. Looking good, is that unique? That's unique. So with our clear targets um, macro, we can come in here and when we disable it again, we can simply run a clear target macro action on all without current, because that is who we're disabling our auto assist on, or that's who we don't want to auto assist because auto assist will be disabled. So quick setup 42 and our clear target, and there's that. This doesn't need to go in any certain order, but I do like, I do like the slope that it makes here. Again, I know I'm, I'm crazy guy, crazy guy Mirai is set in his ways. So we'll export that. Show this demonstration one more time. They do not have targets up there. We did time out. We did just make a macro. We need to reload. So they do not have targets up there. We will acquire a target. We'll press two, key maps are enabled. They do not assist. We press alt two. We see the pop-up text, auto assist enabled. When we press two, they assist and they cast. When I press Alt 2 again, watch their windows up there. They will lose their target. Three, two, one. Target lost. Auto assist off. Go back to DPSing with my main. Just like that. Just like that. Cool. Cool. Now what can we do with that? What can we do with that? Instead of tying these to hotkeys, we can tie these to buttons. Visual buttons that we can click and turn things on and off kind of like a miniature control panel, if you will. We're going to be setting these up in a click bar. You can do this in menus as well. Menus are much more involved. Click bars are ultra simple, ultra simple. Right click on click bars, new click bar. We will call this uh, 
control because we're going to be controlling a few things with this. Like any area of ice boxer, when you're in, say, the character set section, God damn it. <laughs> when you're, and you're on a slot or something and you want to go back to the general settings of the character set, you click on the name of the thing in the upper left of the lower left, pa- of the lower left pane. The name of the thing in the upper left of the lower left uh, pane. Same thing with key maps. You want to adjust key map global properties here. The name of the key map in the lower left pane. You want to adjust properties of the click bar. Let's say you're down here in buttons. You would click on the name of the click bar in the lower left pane to re uh, to re gain control of the properties panel, I guess. So uh, I'm going to kill the border size. We're going to set a starting position of like. 300 by 300, something off the upper left corner. Zero, zero is the upper left corner. I'm not gonna make any more changes. Come into the button section. We do not right click this. We don't right click this to create buttons. We come into the button section. It is is its own configuration area. Right now we're just gonna create one button. We're gonna make this button gigantor so that everyone can see it. When you click off of here, it looks weird, right? The old button is still there. Just click off of here, click back. It refreshes, we're good to go. Click on your button. When you click on the button the first time, you can access its properties. Name of the button, I'm leaving it the same. I don't have any images, but if you select an image, make sure you check the image box or else I don't believe the image will actually be applied. Text, we'll call this assist. Color, uh, we're gonna start this in red. We're gonna do a few things here. We're gonna do a few things here. Um, So when you pick colors for certain things, not text, but anything else, you also get the alpha as well. So it's ARGB instead of just RGB. So in this case, we'll go the starting state of assist of auto assist is disabled. So we'll make this red textile. Uh, Tahoma, we can do a big font. We'll try 24 ish, hopefully. Uh, what are we saying? Assist? Yes. Yes. Looks good. That all looks good. Um, now, when you left click on the button after it's already focused, you can, it will eat clicks. So you can left click on it and it'll get this addition put down here. You can right click on it, you get another one. Uh, you get sh- hold down shift and left click, you get another one. Now, you don't have to hold down shift and hit left click to get this specifically, because if you just want to adjust what you've already got, right, you can just pick, you can just pick which, which click it should eat and which modifier needs to be held at the same time. So you don't have to do that specifically. You can just, you know, tick the shift uh, box, and now it turns into shift left click. However, we won't be doing that. I'm just going to be setting this to a left click for this particular button. In this button, we see the same three options of what we see in a do mapped key action. So our key map is in base hotkeys. Our mapped key is the auto assist toggle. The auto assist toggle already holds the multi window or multi character targets that we are already using. Therefore, our target is window current. 99.99% of the time, I would say 100, but I know someone's going to come out of left field with some reason why they may have chosen a different target here. But dare I say 100% of the time, you will always have this set to window current because your mapped key that you're pointing at already has the proper targets in place. They may, that may not be, again, I should just say 99.99%. 99.99% of the time, your mapped key has the target. And so this will be, this will be window current. Now we're going to spice this up a little bit. We can create this here. I'll just show this. I'll show this real quick. Um, when you want to assign something to anything, <laughs> it's boxer, click, hold and drag, right? Click, hold and drag. You click, hold and drag our Druid's character set down here. Boom. There it is. Likewise, likewise, we can come into the Druid's character set. I showed this in the first video. Click on a node. There's the thing. Enable it. And there it appears right there. This is now assigned to our Druid's character set. I'm going to export this very quickly to show that this does appear in game, but we're going to spice it up because, because I should make that text white. Because when we click it, right, it's, it's red. It's in a default uh, state of disabled. And when we click it, it turns it on. It runs that map key, but this stays red. Personally, I want to animate the button. I want to make it green when assist is on, when auto assist is on because that gives me visual feedback that, hey, auto assist is enabled. Because if I just keep clicking this, it'll go through the steps properly, right? We can see the pop-up text, but we're not changing the color here. So let's change the color. We come into our base hotkeys key map. 
This is where we want to adjust the color of that button. We want to use click bar actions because we want to adjust a click bar button. We want to adjust the click bar button. So window current, nope, I want to adjust this on everybody. Click bar, we've only got one. Click bar button, we currently only have one. The color, when we click this, when we enable, in this, in this action, we are enabling auto assist. So in this action, our click, bar, our click bar button action, we're gonna make the button green, just like that. Copy, come into here, paste. It doesn't need to be in a certain order, but I like the slope. <laughs> make that red when we click it again. And there we go, right? We'll now have a, a, a red and green button that cycles. I do wanna change this real fast to be white text instead of black text, just like that. And is that all we wanted to do for this? For this demonstration real quick? I believe so, I believe so. Every time we click the button, we will run a step. So here we go. Again, key maps need to be enabled because our auto assist is in base hotkeys. You test the mapped key, you make sure it works. You've got the hotkey assigned to it. When you're all ready, you know, you test it out and then when you're ready to put it where it needs to go, you can pull the hotkey from it. In this case, we will pull the hotkey from this particular um, uh, mapped key as well because now we're accessing it via a button. So we'll pull the hotkey and we'll eventually put it where it needs to go. But for right now, back to the demonstration. We'll click this, it will turn green. We will auto, again, no auto assist, right? We click it, it turns green. Auto assist enabled. We click it again, it turns red, they clear their targets. Auto assist disabled. Look at that. Very fancy, very fancy, right? Now there's a problem with this. There's a problem with this. If we enable this and we turn it green in all of the windows, right? The problem is that the other windows are actually not in sync. We're changing the color of the button in the other windows so it looks like it's in sync, but it's not. If we come into any other window at this point and we click this, it is not going to turn red. And in fact, it will stay green and we will see the pop-up text say auto assist enabled. That's weird. It should go red and it should disable, right? Well, that's what we would want. So we need to fix that because these particular windows are not synced up between the steps. Mapped key steps are on a per window basis a per window basis. Same thing as I come over here. If I click this, the same thing's gonna happen. It's going to stay green and we're going to see the auto assist green text on the screen because we were still on step one. We didn't actually push to step two other than in the window we pushed to step two in. I know that's a little confusing. I have an entirely separate video about mapped key step actions on my channel, which will delve a little bit deeper into this. But for now, we're going to add in a mapped key step action. In step one, we want to tell everyone, in this case, because we're accessing it from window current, we can use all without current, but I'll just use all with current. Um, pick the key map and the map key, pick the map key and then where, you know, where it resides. This is already set for us because this is exactly where we're at already. If you were using a step action that should be pointing at a different map key and a different key map, you would change that here. Here we're going to, well, here you can add a step so you can add a step, you can plus one or you can minus one. I don't like to add or subtract. I like to just hard code in my steps. So from step one, we're going to set everybody to step two. Copy action, come in here, paste action. We're going to set all with current. For this map key, we're gonna set them to back to step one. If you can't see it, because the map key step has a very long name, you can click in here and you can hit home and it'll take you to the front. You can see that we are indeed on one, on step one, we're setting to step one. So there you go. Looking good, looking good. Export that. And now as a final demonstration for this button, when we click it, it will turn green in everyone's window. It will enable auto assist. However, now when we go to other people's windows, they have been at this point told to move to step two. So now when we click this, it will go red and we will see auto assist disabled in the pop-up text. Just like that, magical. And it is indeed, it is indeed working. She has, she has the always adjust, but uh, if we turn that back on, there you go. Auto assist is working, the toggle's working, the pop-up text is not lying to us. 
Very fancy, right? Very fancy. Let us expand upon this very fancy mapped key or click bar of ours. Let us expand upon this click bar. So from here, what are we doing? We're going to add in a few buttons. Let's add in a few buttons, shall we? Come back into the button editor. We're going to go uh, two, two, not 23, two by three. Oh my God. <laughs> two by three, please. And where is our, this is going to hit our unit frame. So let's actually change the starting position as well. So back in its general properties, we'll change the starting position to like 120 by 120. That should give us a lot of room, hopefully. Um, back to the buttons. Okay, how do we want to do this? We want to select these, <laughs> doing this, uh, doing this live, folks. Um, select these and change our text to be forward, text style white. We're going to keep it black. Uh, Twenty-four point looked good before. We'll keep it again. Come over here, click. Well, we'll double click again. We can cl double click on all of these to add that in. So we'll focus text left text style. It's already set for us because of what we set before. It just carries over until you leave the click bar and then it reverts back to default, but that's fine. This will be backward. I hope you guys see what I'm doing at this point. This will be right. Tahoma 24, perfect. Okay. So on our, on our forward button, we would tie this to to the move forward, the others move forward, mapped key. Cool. Left. We're going to do that here. Others, uh, others strafe left. Where is that? That is here. Click. And again, if you don't have this for some reason, you have to focus the button. Click again. It eats clicks at that point after it's focused. This is moved backward. And this is strafe right. Just like that. Move forward, strafe left, move backward. I'm just reading it from here, strafe right. Okay, we're looking good. Things are labeled correctly. Our text is looking good. Everything's looking good. What else can we do? We have one more button here. We have the auto assist and we have an auto interact. Yes, we do. We will set this to be interact, but we don't have that mapped key set up just yet. So we do want to go do that. We'll set this here. We can't set this to anything yet because we need to create that maps key. So like our auto assist, we will make a copy of that. Before this, I'm going to pull the, the hotkey from here because we're, we're changing this with a button now. I don't need to have it on a hotkey and a button. So we'll call this um, auto interact toggle. Looking good. We will also <laughs> pull the hotkey from here because I copied it accidentally. There we go. Okay. In here, instead of the auto assist me, we will come in here. We will change the auto interact method down here. Auto interact method. Cool. Do this map key instead. The wizard will have set it up this way where it just points at the interact with target standard. Okay. Change button one, one. No, we're going to change button one, three, but we'll be back here in a moment. So let's just make these changes here. We'll push to Step two of the auto interact toggle. This is just going to push us to step two. That's fine. Then in step two, we need to make this change again. The auto interact method. Do nothing instead. Boom. We don't need a clear, I don't need this clear target in here for my auto interact toggle off. And from here, we'll push back to step one. Double check that. We're pushing back to step one. Okay. And of course, we do want to change our pop up text to be interact. We'll come back into this in a moment after we set this here. It doesn't, the order doesn't matter. I just, you know, I just like to bounce around a lot so that, I don't know, people just kind of get used to bouncing around. So auto interact also starts off by default. So we'll set that to red. Cool. We'll point this at our newly copied auto interact toggle down here at the bottom of base hotkeys. We'll come back into hot base hotkeys. Auto interact toggle, auto assist for this button. We're going to be changing button one, three. That is the name of the button. It just happens. To, I just didn't change its name. You don't need to change its name. I just know that it's button one, three. Color is going to go green because we're turning on auto interact. Likewise over here. 
The color is fine. We just need to change the button that we're adjusting just like that, one, three. And now if I did everything perfect, <laughs> it should just work, right? It should just work. We'll have a bigger button, a bigger set of buttons. We'll, there it is, big and black and a little red, just how we like it, wake up. And so now, once again, we will preview this. We have a target, nobody's auto assisting. We click this, auto assist enabled, everybody assists. We will click this, auto assist disabled, clearing targets up top, no auto assist. Forward, we click and hold forward. They will move until we release the key, just like that. Backward, left, right, a little bit of left. There we go. Now we'll try auto interact as well. Uh, we'll turn on auto assist, sure, and auto interact. So right now, uh, when I press my interact with target, actually, yeah. When I press my DPS keys, they won't interact, right? Because auto interact is not enabled. So if I come over here and I turn on auto interact, this will, for the remainder of the characters here, for all without current, turn on auto interact. And now when I press my DPS keys, druids, because interact with target is, as I said in the previous video that you, that you didn't watch or you forgot about, interact with target is class-wide behavior. Druids, even though they're ranged casters right now, will still run into melee range because that's how druids work. So watch this. There they go. They will eventually, whoops, okay, here we go. <laughs> They're gonna run away like fools. They will eventually, once they get into the melee range, they will eventually start casting. There we go. So it's a little awkward to have that on, on casters. So there you go. Auto interact is working, or is it? Can we actually toggle it off? Please clear the targets, ladies, please. <laughs> Vicious. So if we turn auto interact off, we do get the pop-up text. We're assuming we've now properly moved to step two. The auto assist is enabled. They will pick up the target. They will cast, but they will not run towards it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Auto, assi auto assist. Everything always works great for Mariah. Oh man, it's because I've done this shit for like 38 years, man. <clears throat> I make mistakes from time to time. It happens. It happens. But uh, there we go. We've got our fancy dancy click bar. However, is there a problem with our click bar? There is. <laughs> when we open up panels in game like this, we can't actually interact with the things underneath it. We can't, you know, we can, you can't actually, right? Because then you start moving your characters when I start hitting the back key. So that's problematic. If we make a bunch of buttons, we can obviously make it a little bit smaller. It's kind of ridiculous at the moment, but uh, um, but we can toggle the center off with the other click bar action that we saw there, right? That we saw there. Um, where do I want to put this? <laughs> I don't know. Um, we're getting a little out of control here. So let's just put our toggle in always on because I always want to be able to toggle it on or off. But in this case, um, what keys haven't I, have I used Alt-Q? We do have Alt-Q bound. We have Alt-A bound to our, our quick repeater. What haven't we used? What can I use? Alt, Alt-W? That's kind of weird. Alt-3? We'll use Alt-3, I guess. Set this to Alt-3. Cool. We'll call this our click bar toggle. Click bar toggle. If you have more than one click bar, it might help to, uh, name which click bar that is you're toggling on and off. It, this is a toggle, so we're gonna have two steps, but click bar action, it's not a button action, it is a state action. State actions are always on or off, one or zero, paused, unpaused, there or not there, so state action. Window current, well, no, we wanna turn this off in everybody's window, click bar, which one do we have? We've only got one, we're gonna turn it, well, actually, I think we're going to detach it. Let's detach it from our character set because remember, it's only attached to one. We would need to attach it to the other two. So in this case, if it's attached to no one, the first press of the key is going to just turn it on and show it. So we'll detach it from the, the, the druids and we'll, um, with first press, turn it on and with the second press, turn it off. There is a toggle option here. I don't use the toggle option. I, I, I always either force it on or off. The deal is that it probably works just fine if you toggle it at this point. However, if you are for some reason tying into this mapped key somewhere else, you can fall out of sync, right? If you don't hard code it to an on or an off. 
So keep that in mind. There's all that on or off. Cool story. Alt three. And we will pull this from the druids. Um, there is sometimes a bug. I'll just say this now in case we see it. There's sometimes a bug when you, when you, um, it happens when you change the name of a click bar, but sometimes it happens when you delete it. So if I just come into the click bar itself and we just like delete the druids character set, it should technically be unassigned here. Sometimes it's not, but sometimes it lingers. And again, if you change the name of it and then you export, the old version, the old original name will still linger there. And you will either, you will need to open the in-game GUI and close it or completely relaunch, you know, shut down and start your character set over again. Um, otherwise that's it. What did we just do? So we, we unassigned it and I want to hit Alt three. We turn on our click bar, Alt three again, turn it off. And this, this, you know, this, this state is, is, is recognized even if it's off, right? So we've turned auto assist on, right? And then I press Alt three again, I can turn it off and, and hide that. And then when we press two, I did turn it off, right? <laughs> press two, it's not on anymore, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's hidden or not. It's a simple visual, but uh, there you go. There's a bunch of fancy stuff. There's a click bar, everything. I hit everything. I think, I hope there's a lot of stuff actually not in my notes. Um, so from here, I'm actually going to take a small break because I need a swig of water and it's getting a little warm in here. We're going to cool it back down. Then we'll be on the paladins. I'll be moving to a manual assist. Uh, we don't have too much left to talk about, but there is probably still a solid 30 plus minutes. Left. I don't know. You'll see the fucking run time. It doesn't matter, but uh, we'll be on the paladins. We'll be doing some more manual interacting. Uh, we'll be showing the interact issue again. Then we'll be moving to a video effects layout as well as the slot swap consolidation. So I will see you in just a moment after I log out. Here we go. Be right back folks. Okay, folks, uh, I had to take a phone call. So um, this took a back seat for a moment. Uh, <laughs> so uh, even though it was an immediate transition, so we're switching over to the Paladins. We've got to move through this quickly because it's getting late over here and uh, I'm getting hungry. So Grandpa Mariah needs to feed himself here. We're going to be moving to the Paladins. <laughs> we're going to be trying to cruise through the rest of this quickly. And you're like, thank God. So uh, I believe we're moving to the Paladins at this point. But before we do that, before we do that, we are on the Druid's character set. It's been sitting here the whole time. Um, we're going to launch our Paladin's character set if we're going to make that change. Because if we don't, when we get in game, we're going to see the pop-up that says character in wrong window. Some functionality may not be like, right because you can see the pop-up here. Debonair, Allegiant, Belaeus, Hikash, Devout. Fantastic. And you as the astute ISBoxer user that you are, you know that even if you've been messing with add-ons, installing new add-on packages that disable other add-ons, you have come through. You've come through and you've said, you know what? We're going to keep this IS Boxer add-on enabled on all of our characters because that's what you do. You're such a good IS Boxer user. My chair is screwed up. What are we doing? We're logging into the game world. We got some things to show, I think, I hope. Okay. Um, and of course, if you've been messing around with keybinds, macro keybinds, and you've got special keybinds set on your other character sets, you do want to Look at those character sets. Look at the printout, the white text printout in the chat window from the Iceboxer add-on to see if you have any conflicting keybinds, which we don't. So, um, what are we doing? We're turning on our bar. We're turning on our bar, and we're going to show some cool stuff here. So, uh, once again, with we'll just turn on auto assist. That works here. I'll show that it works here. We'll auto assist it on. Again, we, we, I believe we blanked everything out. So all of our character sets have nothing uh, set, but with auto assist on, if I simply hit my interact with target um, button on my mouse, they will interact with an auto assist. Cool story. Right like that. We will turn on auto interact here. We're going to kind of go with a refresher here. We will turn on auto interact. We are going to uh, spam this. And I did show that they run around like idiots. And that's what happens. It isn't a bug in Ice Boxer. It's literally the way that the game works. Okay, it's not a bug in Ice Boxer. <sighs> so uh, these things, these guys are running around. And I said, when, when you're playing a, a, another melee class, you're close by. You could just hit your follow key and go back to DPSing, and everything's all good, right? So that's fine and dandy. However, you see me bringing my characters over here too. You see me bringing them here, doing this and hitting break follow. 
How am I breaking follow? With my move backward key. And you're absolutely right. We did not get into a party. So with our very fancy press and release enhanced invite key, we shall hold down shift alt press and hold I. We can see the invite up top. We will release in a party just like that. Getting ahead of myself here because we're trying to rush. Hopefully I get everything done that I need to. So, um, right. But let's pretend we're playing from a ranged character now. So we're, we're, we're spamming our DPS key like maniacs and auto interact is on and they're running around like maniacs and I'm a range class back here. I don't want to hit the follow key because they're just going to come follow me. I want them to stay doing their thing. So I hit my, my mouse button that is bound to my move backward key, which interrupts movement. Pow, pow. Just like that. Look at that. They stop running around. They stop running around. Come back here again. Interact, run around. There we go. And if I just hit my move back, I can also just click the button too, right? So I click the, the move backward button that interrupts all crazy man movement. There you go. So that's a way to uh, control that, right? That's a way to control that. And, um, but we're going to be moving to our manual assist. Now, again, uh, I didn't, I should have probably talked about this when I made the, the movement keys, but you know, they're on follow here, right? And then I just hit my, my move back key, boom, break follow, just like that, right? This is, this is, I mean, if you just go back and watch the first part, which I know you did because you're an amazing person and you wanted that knowledge, I talked about when you're setting up map keys, you're sending a key or you're pressing a key and you're sending a key. You're pressing a key, you're sending a key. So I said, fall out of the mindset of casting fireball, of casting big heel, of move, of breaking follow, right? How do you break follow? If you're on this character and you press, jumping doesn't break follow because we're on a actually 2D plane. When you're grounded, jumping does not break follow. When you're in the air flying, when you're swimming, there is a Z axis. So jumping does break follow. However, if you're following, how do you break follow? Right? How would you do that in game? Answer that question. I press my move back key. He says, you stop following Debonair. Magical, right? Magical. That's a magical epiphany. We're like, oh, we'll just send the move backwards key. That's the answer, right? That's the answer. How you break follow. Any movement key breaks follow. Any movement key breaks follow. These guys have the, <laughs> I must've been messing around on them previously. They have the auto adjust. I've been doing dry runs of these things time and time again. So they probably have the old camera style. I'll just hit alt one to set it on everyone to make sure it's set. So Regardless, there's that. Oh, and the, the follow train, right? So the follow train, I, I wanted to, you know, we use the macro variables for the, the main reason of being able to use this follow train anywhere without having to hard code names into a macro. Uh, again, that's kind of specific to World of Warcraft, but uh, if I hold down shift and I hit my mouse five, or yeah, that's what it is, mouse five, they, you know, turn, we see them turn because they're following different characters now. If we just clear the targets, they put their goddamn swords down and we can see that we have a follow train. That works on this character set and from any character. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fix his, uh, his camera, but you can see that the train is working here. Perfect. Perfect. Right. Perfect. So there's all that. So we're going to move to, we're going to be get back in formation because that is ultra important with moons over our head, like lucky charms cereal. Uh, what's next? We've got that. We've got that. We've got that. We're going to go back into ice boxer. Now we're going to come into the, is this where we want to go? Yeah, this is where we want to go. We're coming back into the party key map, party key map. And we're going to make our Frankenstein manual assist. This is going to be a press assist, release, interact, press assist, release, interact. And before we get into that, let me just once again, since we're talking about melee and you may have not, as the terrible person you are, may have not watched part one of part two, interact with target standard right in here. People are confused as to why click to move turns off because interact with target standard is a two-step process. You press, you turn and click to move on. You release, you turn and click to move off. That's why click to move turns off. That is why click to move turns off. Now I will make a change here actually, because sometimes I know this is buried in hours of footage. Sometimes you may find that when using just the standard method that click to move gets stuck on, on your main window on, on window current. And that's kind of annoying. You have, then have to go into the interface and turn it off, right? The interface options and turn it off. Well, if you just set the off to 
all with current, this is one of those changes I would make to everything that has LAX has set up. I would set this to all with current to ensure, even though it's not being turned on in all with current, it may get stuck on at some point just for whatever reason. And so if you always want to ensure it's off in your main window that you're driving from, you would change this to all with current. There you go. I'm going to make that change. I'm going to keep that change. So what are we doing here? What are we doing? We're going to make our Frankenstein mapped key. So we're going to be pulling from both the wow macro and the interactive target standard. So I'm going to make an actual copy of this and we'll pull this up here and we will close that down so we don't confuse ourselves. We will rename this to be plus interact. Okay. That's good. This is going to be a two-step process. I did say press and release, press and release, right? So in step one, we're going to assist. And in step two, we're going to interact. But before we can interact, we need to enable click to move. So we're going to copy this action. We're going to paste this into here. We're going to move this up. Doesn't really matter in this, in this case, but uh, I'm going to move it up. Then we're going to take interactive target to all. We're going to copy that action. We're going to put it in step two. Boom. There it is. We're going to take the click to move off. We're going to copy this. We're going to put it in step two. Boom. Move this to the top. Or I'm no, move this, keep this on the bottom because we want to interact before click to move gets a chance to turn off. So yeah. Otherwise, if you're turning off click to move beforehand, your melee teams and whatnot uh won't 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 run to the target, right? So there's that. This was a press or release. This was not originally. So we're going to disable the hold and we're going to set pressed or released for our two-step process here. Likewise, if this for some reason is not working for you, you can actually make this a four-step process, right? You can do uh, click to move on, release, assist, then uh, interact with another press and click to move off. So I'll just show a copy of that. I don't want to modify what I've got there because then I have to unmodify it. There's no, there's no undo button. So we'll probably have to move the camera, move the, the video down a little bit because of the zoom, but for just uh, copy steps, paste steps, we will want to do this. So this is another option you can do. Just like that. Click to move on with a press, release, assist. Click to move, uh, interact with target, press, click to move off, release. There you go. Just like that. You know, if you're if you're if you're spamming your 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 assist key, you could just, you know, it's easy to just press it twice. You get two releases out of that as well. So that's another way you could do that. I'm not going to do that because I know that this right here works for me. This is how I set up my daily driver. Although again, you don't even have to include the click to move. You could do say, you know how we're, we're, we're toggling on the different camera following styles. What you could do was you could create a map key that handles instead of camera following styles, it would just manually handle the click to move. You could always ensure that click to move is turned off in your main window and then turn it on, on all without current, right? So you could do that. And then when you swap windows, I'll be showing how to do a slot swap math key later, you could tie that into that so that when you swap windows, um, it always follows that window, right? That's cool too. And then you could leave the click to move completely out of these two steps and it would just be a, a straight assist with interact with no click to move involved. So there's all that. And I do want to say this, that I should have said this right before we started that you don't have to follow this, right? If you want auto, auto assist and auto interact, then good, phenomenal. That's your choice. All of these are your choices. Do you want to implement this? Do you want to add that? Do you want to uh, do this somewhere else, right? That's your choice. Personalize your profile to how you need it. This is how I like to move. This is how I like to handle things. So from here on forward, I'm going to stick with my manual uh, press and release, assist and interact. And so because of that, we want to come in here, virtual map keys tab. We're going to want to change our active method for assist to our newly created macro plus interact right below it. Okay. And because I'm doing this, I will never ever turn on auto interact or auto assist again, because I'm handling this manually. If you start turning on these auto methods, then you're also going to be getting, you're also going to be feeding back into the, the macro and the interact. If you stick with assigning these to active methods, you could always just hard code these to uh, the macros themselves. If you really, really, really wanted to keep both methods, then you could just do uh, this like that. You could do that. 
you could do that. But then the click bar that we set up to toggle auto assist is not going to handle it this way. So you'd have to change the behavior in there to reflect this. I'm sorry if I'm losing some people, but some people will want to keep these enabled. I don't. I don't. So I set this. If you do want to keep these enabled, then you probably don't want to move to the manual setup of a press and release in this case for assistant interact. Anyway, moving along, let's test this out in game. And so, again, these are off. They are completely disabled at the character set level, as we just showed. Now, when I um, press mouse three, which is my middle mouse button, they will assist. They do not currently have a target. When I release, they will interact. So when I press, they pick up a target. When I release, they interact. That's my setup now. That's my setup. And so, again, you can go through these drills of there's, there's, there's the assist delay taking place where they run to two different targets. And so I should have, I should have preloaded the target there, but this is another one of those drills, right? We did this, we did this, I'm, I'm failing to pre, pre to preload my target here, but um, we did this drill last time, but standard interact, I believe, or maybe I did it with the, the auto interact, but still when you, you know, get used to being, if you're, if you're playing ranged, you're back here. We're just pretending I'm a ranged character, right? A ranged class who's throwing out heels or something. And I'm trying to control my melee. And so, you know, this is how I would do that from back here. This is just good practice. Just kind of get used to doing this. And so there you go. But let's see if I can get that. No, I can't get it. <laughs> There's the assist delay for all of them. The, before we saw them split up. No. Okay. We're going to get it to happen on all of them, but before that one time they split up. So you may see that as well. Always keep the assist delay in mind. And so with that, oh, now I've messed my placement up. The flying V is important. With that though, we're done with the melee team. There was just a quick, a quick touch on that. Please clear your targets. And we're going to move right into a VFX layout because I want to show there's no transitions here. There's no, there's no tricks. There's no secrets. There's no behind the scenes, anything. With that said though, here's how this works. First and foremost, I have two videos on my channel that pertain specifically to VFX layouts. I've got plenty of videos that pertain to video effects just in general, but two specifically for VFX layouts. One of them is for the basic wizard generated VFX layouts. We're not setting that up. We're not setting that one up. The other one is for custom VFX layouts. We are setting that one up. We are following along with that particular video. I think that's all I want to say. There will be some emphasis. I do want to say that there will be some emphasis in certain areas. I know I'm going to sound like a dick. I'm probably being a little bit of a dick, but it's where people generally end up failing and missing things or misinterpreting things or configuring things incorrectly. So I'm going to try to drive that home as hard as I can in certain areas. Let us move on. First and foremost, this is what you will want to do. We're not going to be following it verbatim exactly, but you should watch the video if I move too fast because I'm just going to cruise through this because this is easy. This is super easy. I'm going to cruise through this. If you're having problems, watch the video. What you want to do, what I've already done, what you're going to want to do is add a game to Interspace. Click on the little thingy here, Interspace, root menu, DX nothing, or root folder, DX nothing. This comes packaged with Interspace. If you don't have this, I don't know why that would be. It is come packaged with Interspace for years. When you install Interspace, it installs this. It puts this here. If you don't have that, Reinstall Interspace. There's also a 64-bit version in here. There should be absolutely zero difference between the 32-bit and 64-bit versions. If you are superstitious like myself, you can try them both. I use the 64-bit version. You do not have this version. This is my special experimental DirectX 12 DX nothing window, which we're not using. You can see it's actually pretty old. It's from Oct uh, October of last year. It's so almost a year old. Yeah. So there you go. I haven't used this in a long time. It was an experimental build that we were trying to work through a bug. And I wanted to, I wanted Lax to build me a special DirectX 12 DX nothing window. That's why that's there. You won't have it. I'm using this one. I'm going to hit cancel, but you are not. You are going to continue to add DX nothing to Interspace. Once you do that, as with all things added to Interspace, you will see at the very top, 
you will see DX Nothing added as a game. If you do not see DX Nothing at the top of the Interspace right-click notification area menu, you did not add DX Nothing. If you don't see it there, it's not added. I promise you. Moving along. In Iceboxer, we first need to create a DX Nothing character. New character. DX Nothing. Game. DX Nothing. If it's not listed here, it's not added to Interspace. However, However, in some fluke moment, perhaps you need to restart IS Boxer. You normally don't need to. DX nothing. There's only one game profile, default profile for DX nothing. That's what we want. This drop down below here, future Mirai who's editing, zoom in on this. We look at this drop down. We're currently set to other. What else do we see? We're currently set to other. What else do we see? We see this DX nothing entry. It seems absolutely apparent. Without a doubt, we should be selecting DX nothing from this drop down. Wrong. Wrong. This is for wizard generated VFX layouts for those DX nothing windows. This is for, I know it's confusing. It should probably just say like wizard in parentheses. It doesn't though. For custom, for custom DX nothing, for, cust for DX nothing windows in custom VFX layouts, choose other. Other, other for custom, other for custom, other for custom. This checkbox below here, video effects viewers stay within background. Check this. This is not specifically part of the video, but I do mention, you know, you should set up DX nothing. And there's a DX nothing link in the video description of that other video that leads to the IS Boxer wiki page for DX nothing, which will tell you it's the only step in bold on that page. It will tell you to check this box for DX nothing windows. They, they keep the viewers when the window is not focused. Too many people come in and they say, I don't see my viewers on my DX nothing window unless I focus the DX nothing window. That's because you have not checked this option. This requires a restart if you're already running a DX nothing window for this setting to take effect. Moving along, we need to make a new character set. Right click on palette. We're already running the paladins. We might as well just make a copy of the paladins. Let me get off of this stupid tab. Make copy. We'll call this uh, Paladin's VFX. Sounds good. We need to add a slot. We need a place for our DX nothing window to go. Slot six, drag it in, drop it in. In slot six, you can, if you want, to undo this, to undo these settings, because the DX nothing window is supposed to just kind of sit there. Some people get hung up on the performance tab as well. There should be practically immeasurable performance from a DX nothing window, not from the viewers specifically. If you start to create a bajillion video effects viewers, you may feel the impact of that. That has nothing to do with the DX nothing window though, or at least it should have nothing to do with the VFX, uh, DX nothing window. So some people start setting options there. They're like, what should I set for the CPU core assignment on my DX nothing window? Nothing, nothing at all. Don't worry about it. It's cool. Some people get caught up on these numbers as well. These limiters, doesn't matter. You have to think that our background windows, they're running at 30. So if this is at 30, that's fine. If you're running faster, you can try to kick this up and see if it makes a difference. I'll just set it to 60. It doesn't really matter though. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Moving along. We have to come into our window layouts. This is our template layout. You will always have a template layout. The video talks about this. You have to build, you have to have a template layout to build off of. If you're trying to make a video effects layout from scratch, well, uh, you're tougher than I am. So I always have a template. This is my template. If you're confused as to why we're using this particular layout and not this layout, I talk about this at the beginning of the previous part one of part two video that you didn't watch. <clears throat> gotcha. This is our template. I'm going to do a little bit of a shortcut here. We're going to click on this big region. We're going to want this size. So I'm going to copy this size right here. 2560 by 1200. Phenomenal. Moving back up to our, I can, uh, I, I guess I can't close anything because we'll kind of be in some of this stuff still. So right click on our character set, window layout wizard. Cruising along for custom, for custom VFX layouts. We are always, always and forever, always and forever using a stacked window layout. A stacked full screen layout will always, always and forever <laughs> be at the very bottom of this list. The stacked full screen layouts are always at the bottom of this list. This is what we want. However, we did copy our main window size. So we can set it here to just kind of make a quick little shortcut in our layout. So now every particular layout we, 
look at, the main window size is 2560 by 1200. Likewise, with our stacked layout that is at the bottom, it is also 2560 by 1200. That is phenomenal. Before we finish the wizard, there's this use video effects option here that is currently set to false. And I know the people see this and they think that should definitely be set to true because we're working with video effects. Wrong, wrong. Leave this set to false. This is for video, this is for wizard generated video effects layouts. Keep this set to false. Do not enable this. Set this to false. It starts as false. Keep it as false. Moving along. What are we calling this? <laughs> BFX layout. Sounds good. Mariah is so mean. In our layout, we need to make some changes. First and foremost, in the general settings of our window layout, we see this checkbox. It's not checked. It says use video effects to show inactive windows. We, once again, are tempted. We're tempted to enable this option because it seems apparent. It seems like it should be enabled. Do not enable this option. This is the same option I just showed in the wizard. Do not enable this option. Do not enable this option. Do not enable this option for custom VFX layouts. In the regions editor, we have our regions. They're stacked. It looks just like it did in the window layout wizard. This is our DX nothing region. Move this out of the way. We want to put these in the same spot that our template layout has them. Back in the regions layout of our temp template layout, here, where is this region? It is at 640 by 480. You may not have to do this step because yours may look something like this, and it's pretty easy to put your layout, put your regions where you want them. Mine happen to be in need of being in the center of my display, so I need to do this. Coming back in here. And again, you can't really, I should have said this in the beginning, you can't really follow this verbatim because I have, to, I have my template layout that is likely much different than your template layout. So you should be following your template layout. But the video will talk about this, the other video, the VFX custom layouts uh, video, will talk about all these things. So paste, click up, triple click, paste, click up, triple click, paste, click up, triple click, just like that. And now they're all stacked in the same spot. That's what we want. We want regions one through how many ever slots we have that are game windows stacked in the same spot. DX nothing region is up here. We need to resize this. What size do we want? We want it to be the same height. We're only going to have one row of viewers. So we're going to want it to be the same height as our template layout. These regions are 512 by 240, but they're 240 height. That's all we're concerned about right now. Back in here, click on this, doot, 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 enter. Move this down. It anchors. It sticks. It sticks to that. It anchors. So there you go. We're good. We're good in here right now. We're totally good. What's next? Is that what's next? I'm going to make sure that I don't screw this up. It's going to be flawless. <laughs> I think so. Uh, moving along in always on. We're going to set this up in always on. New map key. I'm going to make a divider because I feel I need a divider here. New map key, VFX create. Technically speaking, we don't need to do this. The, the, the video does this, I believe, but technically speaking, we don't. I'm going to just kind of do this though. No hotkey. In step one, actions, video effects action. That's the only choice there is. In this dropdown, we want to pick our DX nothing related targets. So I believe I'm not, I don't remember exactly. It's been a long time since I watched that custom layouts video, but I believe it may select the character here. If it shows that, you can do that. However, you can also select the slot. Now I did say for character set slots, we did show this earlier that um, in the dropdown, you would see character set slots and then you would see your characters below it. And we only had druids at that point. So everything just kind of looked the same. Um, but for this, we want to select slot six. I want to select slot six because I just want to show this. We have many more characters here, but we we don't see our, our sixth slot for our Paladin's VFX uh, character set. So what gives? Well, there's this asterisk, this button right next to every single, dare I say, every single target dropdown in Eyes Boxer. Click this. And in here, you can select which character set you want to look at. In particular, everyone's got five slots except for Paladin's VFX. We're going to click on Paladin's VFX. We're going to hit OK. Magically, now in this dropdown, we see slot six appear. There's a little bit of a lesson that if you're not seeing a particular slot or a particular target that you're looking for, and maybe that you don't have the character set assigned in that little asterisk. So we're going to set this to slot six. We're not going to dwell too much on these settings. Load video effects when set named. This is if you're setting 
If you're saving video effects through the in-game GUI, I'm not, I'm not. But if you were, you could load the sets that you save through there with this field here, create an action and load it with this field here, remove all video effects. I'll give you one guess as to what this does. No, it removes all the video effects on a current target window. Why would you say that? <clears throat> hide, show, create, and destroy. I don't think I've ever used hide or show in my life. Maybe in the video, I use hide and show somewhere, maybe. But in, in my actual multi-boxing ice boxer career, I don't think I've ever used hide or show in any sort of serious manner. We're going to be using create and destroy. Those are the two we'll be using. I'm the creator and the destroyer here. So FX name. Uh, normally with video effects, you want a source and a viewer for this. As the video points out, we don't need a source because you've seen me use this before. If you didn't, you weren't watching, you haven't watched those videos. We're using IS1 because IS number is the slot number. It's an internal uh, label slash identifier given to every single slot of your character set. So IS1 would be slot one. This is also, um, Interspace is nice enough when it creates this identifier that it also creates a source automatically for us. So we don't need to create any sources for these particular viewers. We're just making viewers. What size are they? What did I say? They were 512 by 240. If you're like, where's he getting that value from? <laughs> I'm just making it up, kids. No. Regions right here. How big are these regions? 512 by 240. Boom. Moving along. Pay attention. Keep up. What other options do we want here before we make copies of this? Because when we make copies of this, it's easier to just make copies of things that already have all the options we want set. Enable video effects, focus hockey. Yes. Include mouse through. Not for me. Maybe for you. Focus hockey. Yes for me. Maybe no for you. Hold map key. We won't be doing this in this, in this particular video, but maybe you will see where this comes in handy perhaps in the next set of videos or how many ever there more there will be. Position, we're not concerned about that right at the moment. We're looking good. We're looking good. We're going to make a copy. Click in here, paste. Click in here, control C, control V. Click in here again, control V. I only want five. There we go. We've got five because we've got five slots. We're going to go into each of these. IS2, IS3, IS4, and IS5. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Everything's looking good. IS1 through IS5 here. They're all 512 by 240. They all have the enabled video effects focus hockey enabled, and they're all assigned to appear on slot six, which is the DX nothing character of our character set. However, the position is currently sitting at zero, zero for all of them, which means they're all going to be placed on top of each other, which doesn't really help us, really doesn't allow us to see all of them how we want to see them. So WTF mate. Well, here's where people can get tripped up because you may find, you may find that you have to do some math. People also get tripped up because they use wrong values. So if we, if we look at our template layout, if we click on one of these regions, this would be IS1 in our case. Where is it? Well, people start to use this location. They use the 640 by 240. That is incorrect. This is currently at 640 by 240 in relation to the blue region behind it. This would be zero, zero. This is 640 by 240. But it is in relation to the blue region behind it, which is my display, which is my monitor. When it comes to here, we are concerned about where these regions are, where these video effects viewers are going to be placed in relation to wherever the DX nothing window is. Now, the left side of the DX nothing window is always going to be zero. It's always zero. The right side is however wide it is, right? So in my case, it's 2560. So it's zero here, 2560 here. Zero on this side, 2560 on this side. And that's true whether it's sitting here, whether it's sitting here, whether it's sitting here, whether it's sitting here. This is always zero and this is always 2560. People will punch in the wrong values when they're trying to set up their viewers. If we look at my template viewer, it's my, my original, original viewer, my, my original layout, it's actually correct. We can see 0, 0, 5, 12, 10, 24, and so on. But what happens is that people will have a layout like this. Normally, they don't put it at the top. They have a layout like this, or even along the side will mess it up as well. And so your layout will look something like this if we've avoided the taskbar, which we have. And they'll look at these, these small regions and you'll look, okay, well, the location is 0, 1200. 512, 1200. 1024, 1200. Wrong. The 1200 is in relation to the blue region. 
the 1200 is 1200 pixels down from here. So people will put in that 1200 and 1200 from here is literally down here somewhere way off the DX nothing region itself. If I've lost you, <laughs> I don't know how else to put that. But everything is in relation to this region. We're not even touching the Y values. We're only touching the X values. If we had multiple rows of VFX viewers, we may be touching the Y values then. But we don't. We have one row because our layout is going to look exactly like this. And it's going to behave exactly like this too. So I'm getting a slightly ahead of myself here. So let's actually come back into ISBox before I confuse myself in what I'm saying. So anyway, we have to place these bad boys. Where is this one? Zero, zero. This one, IS2, is 512 pixels to the right of where IS1 is. IS3 is 512 pixels to the right of where IS2 is, which is 1024. IS4 is 512 pixels from where IS3 is. Jenny in the front row, 1536, correct. And IS5 is 500 additional pixels to the right of that. Bobby, 2048, correct, yes. So those are my values right there. Bobby is such a smart kid. <clears throat> those are my values right there. This is actually pretty easy math because they're 512. So you can just drop, like, like here, here, here's a, little, here's a little tip. You can just drop the outside values, right? The, the smaller numbers, 500, 1,000, 15, 2,000. Then add the 12s back in. 0, 12, 24, 36, 48. People are like, duh. I can't tell you how many people messed this up though, man. I can't tell you how many people messed this up. So now we've got our VFX create. We're going to use this when we launch our character set. We're going to tie in and we're going to tell these to populate um, on our DX nothing region. However, we have to make some states for our window layout before everyone goes to sleep. I talk about this in the video, the different states of your window layout. The sun is going down in game. We have to hurry this up. <laughs> the different states... What are the different states that your window layout can be in? And if you're like, I don't even know what that means. Well, we're on slot one and we have a leave a hole. We have a, we have a layout with leave a hole behavior. So when we're on slot one, we leave a hole here. When we're on slot two, we leave a hole here. When we're on slot three, we leave a hole here, right? There's always a hole left for whatever slot we're currently on. If we want to mimic that behavior, then we have to make our video effects viewers mimic that behavior. If you don't use a layout like this, or you don't give a shit if these swap around or not, then you don't have to do this part. However, if you have like a, a different layout where uh, we have a roaming region where IS1 will change where it's at, then you need to mimic that behavior as well. This is super easy to mimic though. Watch. Watch and learn, boys and girls. We're going to make five copies of this. A lot of copy copies there. We're going to call this um, VFX slot one. We'll copy everything but the number and the name. Paste two. Paste three, paste four, paste, sorry, my microphone's in the way, so it's a little weird, but um, there we go. And now knowing that when we're in, when we're focused on slot one, when we're focused on IS1, there's a hole in IS1 spot. So we destroy IS1. When we're on IS2, when we're on slot two, we destroy IS2. When we're on slot three, we destroy IS3. When we're on slot four, we destroy IS4. When we're on slot five, we destroy IS5. You can, make a, you can make a little jingle out of that, a little bit of a song. So there we go. We're destroying. You can't actually see it until you click on things, but again, but we're destroying the proper slots. We still have no hotkeys on these. How are we accessing these? I will show you. Very early on in the first video that you may or may not have watched, but you missed out on this, under the character set itself, under each slot. When I do this, when I switch to this character, do this mapped key. It's currently set to Jamba Master. I don't care about this right now. Well, if I remember to show you how to do this, I'll show you how to do this later. Always on. VFX slot one. I'm going to copy that. Just a quick way to do this. Click, let's go. Paste, down. Slot two. Paste, down to confirm. Some fields need you to... Uh, hit the mouse wheel or something inside of them in order to confirm. Some fields do not. I don't know what makes them different, but I always just paste in, hit my mouse wheel down, and then we can, then we get this populated. <laughs> okay, slot one, slot two, slot three. I don't know why it's taking so long to change between the slots right now. Might be MS Word, and then nothing here. 
back to our general settings of our Paladin's character set. Right here, perform this map key. When character set is loaded or reloaded, we will set this to our video effects create. This is a do map key action again. Always on VFX create. Or the reason I said that this wasn't necessary to do a VFX create is simply because we could have just we could just assign this to VFX slot one if we want to. If we want to. I'll just, I believe the video does it this way, so I'll do it this way. Finally, okay, one caveat with this. Your entire character set has to launch in order for this particular map key to fire off. Your entire character set has to launch in order for this character, this map key to fire off. If you only launch Windows 1 and 2 and then launch your DX Nothing region to test this out, it won't work. It won't fire off. You need the whole character set to fire off before this bad boy fires off. Finally, Video Effects Focus Hockey, we did enable that. The default binding, this is something I actually missed in the video, but the default binding is alt mouse one. I'll show what happens that people get uh, confused about here coming up uh, as well. So we will, I believe we're good. Are we good? Are we good? I'm not even gonna look at my notes. I know I'm good. So right here, live on camera, right in front of everyone. What are we gonna do? We're on our standard Paladins character set with our old school window layout. We need to get the hell out of here. Because we just exported in our character set list. Now we now have Paladin's VFX listed there. I'm going to click that. We're going to load up these character sets. I'm going to do a quick stretch because uh, uh, it's a victory stretch. Uh, mm, crack that back. Oh. So has anyone, anyone ever played Mortal Kombat, the original? You know, when, when you defeat your opponent and you take no damage, Shang Tsung where, will tell you, he will say flawless victory, right? That's what this is. This is a flawless victory. <laughs> if you've played old school Street Fighter, I'm sure they do it in the, the, the plenty of Street Fighters, but when, when again you fight your opponent and you take no damage, they tell you you did perfect. This is a perfect VFX layout. I'm laughing because someone, someone is going to watch this and they're going to be like, dude, what the hell? What the hell? There's some aesthetic changes we're going to make, but I wanted to take this in steps before we get blown away here. So there it is. Pow, just like that. And now we once again have to cycle between our windows because these things do get stuck. So we'll do a little bit of cycling and we can see the swapping behavior of our VFX viewers is indeed working as intended. Just like that. Flawless victory. Beautiful. Now, boys and girls, here's what happens is when you come up here and you're gonna like click to, to change your regions, you're like, I can't, I can't. It's not, it's not changing because the VFX focus hockey by default is alt mouse one. You hold down the alt key. You click with mouse one, boop. However, if the DX nothing region is not already in focus, you may find that you have to hold alt and double click like that because the first click actually focuses the DX nothing region. So here's what can happen. You may find yourself in a situation where you've got your menu up here. Or if you've left it in the upper left, it's over here then. What can happen is that when you're on, when you go to switch to slot three, you can click, you can, cl you can click. Oh wait, how, how, how did, how did repeater turn on? Oh, whoops. I just turned my key maps off. That's because you can click through the viewer and you're clicking the menu back here and you're toggling your key maps on and off. You're toggling repeater on and off. And you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how this is happening. So I like to remove this menu from here so it doesn't catch me off guard. The other thing I like to change is that when you turn repeater on from another window and then you mouse up, you can see it in the DX nothing region. That annoys the shit out of me because when I'm usually on slot one here and I'm trying to do things, I always see that out of the corner of my eye. I always think there's something weird going on whenever I see it there on the DX nothing region. And that bothers me to no end. So we are going to fix those two issues. Let me check my notes here. Now I can look at my notes. I'm going to allow myself to look at my notes and make sure that we don't screw this up. I'm trying to move through this quickly, folks. Oh my God, this is taking forever. Um, right. We're going to change our video effects, uh, video effects focus hockey to just mouse one. Take off that alt, change it to mouse one. However, you may still find that you are an unfortunate individual who has run into the problem that you still need to double click for some reason. And in that case, you can come into your newly created video effects layout and you can enable the focus follows mouse option here. You can enable that if you so choose. I have never needed to enable that. I don't think I'm going to need to enable that now, so I'm not going to enable that. However, we're going to take care of, uh, first and foremost, let's take care of the, 
the repeater problem. So our repeater is, of course, um, we'll take care of it for both quick and um, uh, quick and the standard. So we're pointing at current window here, and we've got our quick as well. So we'll make changes into both of these. So in step one, this is our this is what's known as a repeater target action. What we're doing is we're from window current, we are then telling, we're setting the repeater target to all without current. That's why when we broadcast, it is on a per, per window basis. The, the state of repeater is on a per window basis because we only ever enable it from window current. But we tell, we, we, we broadcast from the window current to everything else. So instead, uh, well, well now all without current also includes the DX nothing window as well, right? So before, actually before we do this, let's just, let me just make this extra quick change here because if you have multiple DX nothing regions, sometimes you do. I have done this in the past. You may want to make an action target group. We'll make a new action target group called DX nothing. We will, with the action target group selected, scroll up to our character, click, hold and drag our DX nothing character into our DX nothing ATG. You may not have to do this, but you will definitely have to do this if you run multiple DX nothing windows. Back to, back to this here. Quick and this one. Okay. So back to this. We're changing this repeater target. This is where we're going to use some custom advanced targets. All without current. Did I talk about this? I believe I talked about this before that all without current is actually all other, right? So we're going to do an all other in parentheses, close those parentheses, and sign tilde DX nothing. That's telling that says all other and and not DX nothing. All other except for DX nothing. But it only matches DX nothing because it matches by name. If I, you know, if I if I spelled this wrong and I put two G's in there accidentally, that would not work. That does not work. So um and, and if my character or ATG was named something other than DX nothing, this would not work. So this only works because of the name of it. It matches the character and the ATG, but the ATG overrides the character. So, um, so there you go. All other and not DX nothing. We'll do that as well for our quick. We only need to do this in step one, just the repeater target in step one. That's it. Boom. That is solved. That's solved right there. Next, for our menu, this is tricky, right? Because when we look at our, we look at our character set and the menu is assigned here. So first things first, I mean, if we unassign it, you may be okay with that. You may have unassigned this long ago. I'm going to keep it though. I'm going to keep it because I like to show people whether I have key maps enabled or, you know, repeater enabled and whatnot. So if we just remove this from the character set, we export it completely disappears. The hotkeys still work. All that still works. It's just, you don't see the visual buttons. So how can we do this? Well, there's two ways to do this. What we can do is we can go per character on a per character basis. We can click on menus here and we can enable the toggles menu on a per character basis. So click on every single standard character you have other than DX nothing, don't assign it to your DX nothing character, right? So you could do that and you would go come down the list and add it to there. That's long and tedious. There's a faster way to do this. We can close that down now. So in always on, I'm going to, or we can do this, I guess, in VFX create because we're firing this off when we launch the character set. And so in addition to all of this, we will do a menu state action just how we made a click bar state action to toggle it on or off. We don't need to make a toggle. We just want to turn it on. So again, we're left with something like all with current, all without current, yada, yada, yada. All with current is all. So knowing that we're going to use and not DX nothing, we would type in all and not DX nothing. And this will load this toggles menu on all and not DX nothing, everyone except for the DX nothing window. So when we fire off this mapped key, which fires off when we launch our character set, it will create the video effects viewers. It will create the menu properly and we'll be good to go. We will export this now. This will all, what can I export in that field? No, <laughs> that field eats control E. Okay. So we'll export and we'll minimize and we will kill the DX nothing region. And I will actually relaunch this character set. It will just recreate, you know, just relaunch the DX nothing window and repopulate it just like that. Now, first and foremost, we will check to see if we've fixed the repeater target. So when we turn on repeater, 
in the main window and we mouse up over here, we don't see it in the black DX nothing region anymore, right? It's not up here. Good to go. Now, drum roll, please. We can left click. See, I can left click on these regions and everything works. Oh, there we go. That one gets stuck. But when I remove this region, is that menu still going to be there? Anyone taking any bets? It's gone. It's gone, just like that. What's next? This shit is almost over. We're going to consolidate some stuff. Let's go in here. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. So we've got that going on. The other thing we can do here with the Jamba master, if you're still using Jamba or EMA, you can obviously, we've done this a bunch of times at this point, use a do map key action pointed at the wow key map. Here's where Jamba stuff is on. You want to turn on strobe. You want to do master and follow. Uh, you want to do master strobe and follow. There's some options there for you, right? If you're still using, and again, it's EMA or Jamba. EMA is backwards compatible with Jamba commands because Ebony was nice enough to set it up that way. So there's where you could add that in. You would add that in on every single slot from window current. You would add that in and do the Jamba stuff here. You do copy this when you're done and paste it in each of these so that when you swap slots, that is rerun and then your master changes again, right? So there's that. However, we're going to expand this a little bit, just a little bit. We're gonna make some changes here, folks. So follow along, set view, we're gonna copy this. I'm gonna start categorizing this stuff. Set view is a while thing. We're putting this in while. Paste it in. There it is. Uh, back in base hotkeys. Camera following style. Also, copy. It's also a while thing. Put it in here. Boom. Just like that. We're going to strip it of its hotkey because we're going to access it a different way. Let me log in first so we can sit on, so we can do a disconnect check while we wait. So, uh, yeah. Okay, back in here. We moved these two. We just removed that hotkey. Cool. We can come back into base hotkeys. Delete these. Goodbye. And goodbye. Okay, auto assist toggle. We are toggling these. If we wanted them again on a different character set, we are toggling these via a click bar button. Therefore, you're, it's, you know, it's dealer's choice here. I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. We're going to take this out of base hotkeys because I always kind of want to enable this or disable this. Um, so you can put this in always on if you want. It's also a toggle. You can put it in the toggles if you want. I will put it in the toggles, I guess. So we'll put that there and we'll copy our interact as well. We'll come into the toggles. We'll paste it in there. Again, the toggles key map does not get disabled. And we'll delete these out of here. When you do that, I will also make a copy of this divider. Cool. Oops, like that. Okay. Now we did just move these map keys. These map keys are tied to a click bar. That click bar should not dynamically update. I'm going to say should not, and it, it's more like will not dynamically update. So it's still pointing to the base hotkeys key map here. You can see that. We click in here, and there's actually no more map keys selected here. So we need to come into where we moved them, toggles. This was the auto assist, auto assist toggle. Boom, just like that. Same thing with the interact. Click here update the locations, you know, point these at the correct, <laughs> the correct um, mapped keys that we made. So there you go. They're now pointing at the correct map keys. Phenomenal. What else was I doing here? If, okay, yes. No, no if yet. Always on. New map key. Now this is dealer's choice again. Where do you, where do you want to put this master slot swap? So this will be our slot swap main. This is, this is where I'm going to consolidate our set view and our camera following style. If you wanted to make that separate click to move toggle on or off, you would put that here as well. If you had the, if you had performance issues and you were using my slot swap video settings setup, I'm not going to be implementing that on this series in this series at all, because my performance is fine. But if you watch the other standalone uh, slot swap video settings video, you will see uh, that you create a high settings and a low settings macro, same way, you know, you tie into those the same way that we change the camera views. You tie into those the same way, how you could toggle on click to move um, on or off, depending on window current or all without current. And you would also be able to put those into your slot swap main here. Uh, but I only have two map keys I'm going to tie into. So do map key action. We're going to come down to wow. This is where my set view is at. Again, it has the proper target built into it. So we're just using window current, copy that, paste this in. Boop, boop, change this to 
camera following style. Now these two will execute together. Again, if for some reason you wanted to add in the Jamba stuff, you could do that as well. You want to go back to the old Jamba master? Where's that at? Right here. Boom. You would add that here as well. I'm not going to do that though. I don't, I'm not using, I'm not using it. It's so it's, it's not necessary. Now we're going to do another do map key action in each of our slot swap dealios here. Uh, key map action, do map key action, window current, cool. Down to slot swap main. Copy. And then in each of these remaining map keys, we're simply going to paste these in. And now whenever we swap to these slots, it will run this mapped key. It will also chain to the do mapped key action. And it will also run this here, which is probably off the screen, but we'll move down and it's going to do a set view. It's going to properly change the set view. Every time we swap, it's going to also change the camera following style every time we swap. And with that, we're going to export. We're going to get into the game. Show off my invite key one more time. Press release. Did I do that too fast? What? What? Wait, hold on. What? <laughs> Everything always works right for Mariah. Let's cancel that. Oh, wait, did I? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. We broke it. How did we break it? How the fuck did we break it? What? <laughs> what was that about? It worked the fourth time. I don't know what that was about. No idea. Anyway, now that we've got a slot swap in place, maybe I just need to cycle the windows. They were, oh, mm. you know, sometimes there is a, when you, when you export or when you first launch, sometimes it happens to where the windows, they get like stuck in foreground. It's just another kind of weird bug. What was happening, I guess, no, that doesn't make sense. I'm not going to try to explain it. I don't give a shit. You might run into that bug. I don't care. Uh, we're running uh, short on time as it is. So this guy's camera is fine. Make sure everyone gets set. This guy's camera is still fine. And these cameras should be auto adjusting, swinging back behind them. Just like that. When we swap windows, this guy's camera is fine. And their cameras will once again, all of them, even the one we just came from, will, when I release, swivel back behind them. Just like that. We can tell that set view is firing off if we just make a crazy view here. We're zooming into his head. But when I change over back to slot one, watch slot two, he will be, his camera will be back behind him. There's slot two. His camera was pulled back out to a, a set view for it, just like that. So again, if you're controlling click to move when you change windows, you can do that. If you're changing your video settings when you change windows, you can do that. And this is why I pull it apart. Because if for some reason you had like a set view four or a set view five or something, um, and you wanted to make that change, or maybe you're in an area where you don't want to change your cameras, you can quickly come back in here, disable this and export. If I was in the right field. Okay. And now with that, with that, my set view will not be changed. We're just going to look right at this, right at this flag. And now when I change windows, the set view will not fire off. When I click this, he's still looking at the flag because set view is no longer firing off. So I keep these separate so that I can toggle them on and off at will. Like I showed before, you can come into your macro and you can literally pile in a ton of shit into your follow macro. You know, there's already a Jamba thing in there. You could do a set view. You know, you could do an auto interact zero. You can, or a one or something. You can pile all that shit in here, but if you want to make that change and you want to toggle it standalone, well, then you, you're going to be back in here and you're going to be making changes to your macros. You're going to be exporting and then you're going to be reloading your user interface. And that's fine. That works, but just keep that in mind, right? Whereas if we keep it all separate, I can make changes to this at will, turning it on, turning it off, tying into it with the click bar button or a menu button if you want to be fancy, because um, those are a lot sexier than click bar buttons, but more involved, as I said before. But I believe that's everything. I think that's it. I think that's it. There's our setup. There's our Paladins VFX. We will see something similar to this from here on forward. I need to begin figuring out what belongs in the remainder of this series and at a very short time period I have to do this. So anyway, if you're watching this far into the future, it's probably already finished and you can just continue to cruise on. But um, this has been part two of part two. You can see why we split these up at this point. But uh, that's it, man. That's it. <laughs> My name is Mariah. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.